Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. Today we have the 2024 year ahead prediction. We are gonna be pulling some tarot cards. We're gonna be going into your numerology to get the most accurate prediction for your year of 2024, all the significant events that you can expect during this next year. So I'm really excited to get into it with you. And if you wanna to skip to different parts of this video, there's gonna be timestamps linked down below with all the different information of different sections of this video that you can skip to. So whether you wanna look at your numerology or you want to pick your card, get your prediction, whatever it is that you're wanting to look at, all the timestamps are linked down below. This is gonna be a big video with lots of different timestamps. So again, all of those are linked down below so that you can skip to whatever section of the video is gonna be most relevant for you. And with that being said, let's dive into your numerology. So first off, the numerology of the year 2024 has its own energy in and of itself that's affecting each and every one of us. So the numerology of this year, when we take the two, the two and the four, we add those together equals an eight. And eights are incredibly powerful. They talk about infinite potential because if you think about the number eight, it is the sign of infinity. So this is unlocking your infinite potential. This is a year where you can unlock more opportunities than normal. It is a great year for improving your career, your finances. It's a great year for good luck. Eights are associated with that good luck energy. So whenever you set out an intention, there's always going to be things helping you unlock more of that infinite potential. It's a great year to grow your skills, hop into a new hobby, start a new big project. All of this type of energy is um, associated with year eight. And so that is the 2024 year. It is going to be amazing for unlocking more opportunity, especially when we are aware that this energy is happening. It can really help us take advantage of that infinite potential type of energy and magic within the eight number. And then on top of this, if you're wanting to find out exactly your personal year number and what that means for you and how all of this energy is going to be directing into your personal life, then the way that you calculate this number is by taking the number of the month that you're born. So for example, I'm born in June, which is the sixth month. So I would take the number six. I'm born on the eighth day. So I would take the number eight and then I would add that to the current year that it is, which is 2024. So you could take the two and the two and the four and then add all of that together. And then for example, for me, I get the number 22, which is actually a master number. So I wouldn't break this number down further. This would be my year number. But let's say that you add up all your numbers and let's say you get the number 18, then you would break that down and that equals a nine. Let's say you add up your numbers and then you get like 74. Then you would take the seven and the four, you would break that down and you would get an 11, which is also a master number. So then you wouldn't break that one down further either but you're looking to break it down into a single digit number unless you get the number 11 or the number 22. Then you keep it as a double digit number. So hopefully this is making sense. If not, there's also some online free calculators that can help you figure out your personal year number if you are struggling to do so. Although I highly recommend doing it yourself. That way you can always know what number that you're in and you can always figure it out for yourself. I always love using numerology in my life. So I highly recommend learning how to do it on your own, which again, you take the month that you're born, you take that number, then you add it to the day that you're born, and then you add it to whatever the current year is. And you continue to break down and add those numbers together until you get a single digit number, unless you're getting the number 11 or the number 22. I know I'm being repetitive, but I wanna make it as clear as possible so that there's no confusion when calculating your personal year number. Now, once you have your single digit number, or maybe you get a master number, which is number 11 or number 22, those mean different things. I'm gonna have timestamps linked down below so that you can skip ahead to whatever your personal year number is so that you can find out what number that you're in. You can also check other people's birthdays. Let's say you have a partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, or somebody else that you wanna look into what their personal year number is. You can also calculate their birthday with the current year, which is 2024. Then there's timestamps linked down below and I will see you at your personal year number. So first off, if you are a year number one, this is such a powerful number. All the numbers are powerful, but number ones are one of my favorites. And number ones are a new beginning. This is the birth of a new era for you. You might get interested in completely new things this year. You might have a completely new direction that you wanna go in with your life. Because when you're a number one, that means you just came 
out of a number nine year and number nines are all about completion and shedding. So you've just completed a phase. You've just shedded something. You maybe completed something you matured and now you feel like you're being reborn. So going into a number one is so significant because there's a new you that's coming out. And normally in a year, number one, we make big changes and big redirections in our life. So you might get re-inspired or inspired to start a new business. You might get inspired to create an entirely new identity for yourself, do some massive changes. This is also a time where you end up being a leader and you are inspired to step up into more leadership roles. You might desire more freedom and more independence while you're in a year number one. So it's all about unlocking new opportunities. A new era is being born for you. You are being rebirthed and a new you is coming out of the surface. And again, new opportunities and being a leader. There might be a lot of different events going on in your life that call you to kind of step up into a more leadership role. And that is what the number one personal year is. And being correlated with this number eight that we have surrounding the year of 2024, this is gonna be an amazing time to unlock new money opportunities, new career opportunities, possibly opening up your own business. This is such a great time for infinite potential of birthing a new you. So that is the numerology of number one. Now, if you wanna hop into the tarot card reading, the timestamps are linked down below so that you can pick your card and then hop to your personal prediction for 2024. All right, so my numerology number twos, let's talk about your year. If you got a number two, this is a time where we are networking, making new partnerships. A lot of people meet significant people in their life when they're in a personal year number two. This is new friendships, possibly a romance that will blossom for you or taking things to the next level in your relationship. Things might be moving forward. New doors are opening for you, especially regarding meeting new people. Number twos are also a planning stage where maybe you're planning a lot in your life and you're getting a lot of ideas of what you want your future to look like. And maybe you are connecting to all of the different people, even business partnerships that can help you excel in whatever vision that you have. This is again, so significant for meeting people making plans, creating new visions, having new ideas, and finding the path to make that happen for you. So number twos are very significant in that sense. And since we are in the year of 2024, which has the energy of the eight with it, when we take the energy of the eight and we marry it with the energy of the two, which is what you're going through right now, this is infinite potential when it comes to meeting new people. So if you have a desire to meet somebody really significant or call in new relationships into your life, this is such an amazing time for calling in those people. If you want to attract more clients for your business, this is such an amazing year for attracting more people, more clients, more attention, more, um, recognition for who you are and what you do. It's an amazing year for attracting that. And it's an amazing year for coming up with plans that you can move forward with coming up with, um, ideas of, you know, the new path that you want to unlock in your life. And again, calling in the people to support you through that. So that is your personal year number and what that means for you. There's timestamps linked down below so that you can skip right ahead to the tarot card prediction. You can pick your card and then get your personal year prediction for 2024. All the timestamps are linked down below. All right. So my number threes, if your personal year number is the number three this year, this is the year of creativity for you, of self-expression, communication, finding new ways of expressing yourself. This is such an amazing year to be surrounded by more art, more beauty. It's also a year where I feel like a lot of people uh, want to romanticize their life more, to create it more beautiful, more aesthetic, more pleasing. It's a very visual year when it comes to creativity. It can also be an amazing year for writing or creating something. Maybe you've had an idea of something that you wanna bring into this world. Maybe you wanna write a book. Maybe you want to uh, be more artsy, upgrade your home, all of these different things. The number three year is amazing for art and creativity and leveling yourself up in those aspects. So your environment, your aesthetic and everything like that. It's also a year where you might be into reading and up leveling your skills when it comes to your creative expression, how you can improve yourself. And you also might have a big message that you want to bring to the world this year, something that you want to accept 
express or tell people. It's like the footprint that you want to leave behind, the message that you want to bring. So that is the year number three. It can also be significant for love as well. Some people uh, find love in year twos, year threes, and year sixes. Those are the most significant for finding love or for taking your love life to the next level. So I just want to point that out as well. And then since we're also in the year of 2024, which has that number eight energy, when you marry that with the number three energy, this is unlocking your infinite potential to learn a new skill this year. So I would not be surprised if you get inclined to pick up a new hobby, learn a new skill, take a class on something, improve yourself, improve your environment, and get more creative in this year. I'm, your brain is just gonna be loaded with ideas of things to do, but make sure not to get overwhelmed by that. Focus on the things that probably mean the most to you, that speak the most to the message that you wanna to bring to the world, and that's how you can funnel that down and be a little bit more focused when it comes to um, what ideas you actually want to act on. And if you want to dive into your tarot card prediction, all the timestamps are linked down below so that you can skip ahead to pick your card and then skip to your personal prediction for the year of 2024, where we get a really long detailed prediction for your next year. All right. So my number fours, if you are a personal year number four this year, this is so significant because this is all about that self improvement journey. You are probably going to want to up level yourself. You're probably going to want to improve on who you are. Maybe you've been doing a lot of self reflection, some inner work, and now it's time to lay out a new foundation, become the strongest version of yourself. This is when a lot of people, um, mature a lot in terms terms of just becoming more assertive, creating better boundaries in their life is a massive um, part of a year number four, because a year number four talks about your foundation and the um, boundaries that you create. It's also very connected to your home life. So some people find that they move during a year number four. They find that they either maybe open up a business because that's like a foundation. They are rooting themselves somewhere a little bit more. They're finding their roots, their foundation. They're becoming more sturdy and strong, especially when it comes to their boundaries, being assertive. Their personality is getting rooted in a lot more. So figuring out more of who you are and being very confident in that. It's a great year for confidence because again, it's connected to that self -improvement. Improvement. It's connected to making those boundaries, solidifying more of who you are. And as you solidify more of that, that enables you to become the highest, greatest, and best version of yourself. And your number fours are all about that. Since this is also correlated with the energy of the number eight, because of the 2024 year that we're in, when we marry that number eight with the number four, both of these are power numbers together, by the way, they enhance each other so deeply because if you take double fours, it equals an eight. So they, they kind of fit in, they're the building blocks of each other. So these two numbers together, this is an amazing year. If you are a year number four right now, this is going to go and fit perfectly in with our 2024 year. And this is an amazing time to unlock infinite potential within business, within your home life, within your foundation, within self-improvement, becoming the highest, greatest, and best, best version of yourself, upholding boundaries, creating a better sense of assertiveness and confidence within yourself. This is such an amazing year for that. So it is going to be a really big year for my year number fours and also my year number eights and my year number 22s. So that is that. If you also want to dive into your tarot card prediction, I highly recommend clicking down below to the, the timestamps so that you can find, I'm stuttering today, so that you can find the pile that you are the most called towards and then skip right ahead to your 2024 year prediction. We're going to go really in depth. So I'll see you in your tarot card prediction. All right, my year number fives. If you are a year number five this year, this is all about radical change that can bring you and push you further ahead than you've ever been. So if you have a year five right now, year fives are about unexpected change most of the time, but this unexpected change is going to redirect you into the most miraculous things, into the most miraculous times. So in year number fives, a lot of people run into like unexpected shifts, unexpected 
unexpected changes, they might come in ways where you might be thinking like, whoa, what just happened in my life? Maybe you get some news, maybe you hear from other people about things just shifting and going on in your own personal life, things might be shifting and going on, but just know that as these shifts are taking place, a lot of people tend to be a little bit fearful of change because it kind of rips that foundation from under them and they're like, whoa, what? But it's preparing you for something more and the universe always knows what's best for you and knows how to redirect you to the path that's gonna best fit you and best fit the desires that you're wanting to accomplish. So all of these shifts and changes, if you can embrace them and go along with them, you'll find that they actually bring you to the most amazing places in life, the best miracles in life. So. Keep that in mind when you're in a year number five, there's a lot of radical change. You might even feel like you wanna make some radical change, so it doesn't always just come in these unexpected ways. We also have the energy of the number five when we're in a personal year number five, so you might get these radical ideas like, I just feel like completely changing my life. I completely feel like doing an overhaul of my life right now. I just feel like completely doing a, a shift in a 180. That is the year number five. Usually it's a little bit more unpredictable, but sometimes we also create that change. And if you feel like you're stuck or stagnant in anything, it is a sign that we need some radical shifts and radical changes. So that is what the year number five brings. And when we don't make those changes, when we feel like we need to, but we're not making them and we're resisting them, that's when the universe is gonna bring those big changes to us. So keep that in mind that if you do feel like you need to change, this is the year to do it. This is the year to make those big leaps and make those big changes. Since this is also tied to the numerology of the 2024 year, which is a number eight, when we marry this number eight with this number five, which is affecting you, these both go together and allow you to open up a new portal through these big changes because the number eight is that infinite potential. It's kind of a portal energy and when we have that with that radical change energy, we're able to take that radical change and completely unlock new potentials, new doors, new opportunities, unlock completely new paths in our life. So this is creating that infinite potential for you to do so. So I highly recommend taking advantage of the energy of this year with your number five and with that number eight of infinite potential. This is gonna be such a massive time. So that is what you are currently going through. And if you want to dive into your tarot card prediction, which is gonna go so in depth, there's timestamps linked down below so that you can pick your card and then skip to your personal prediction for your tarot reading and I'll see you there. All right, my number six is, if you are a personal year number six, let's talk about the significance of this number. This is the number of harmony. It's also the number of family, of home life, of uh, your really close personal relationships and it's also a number of marriage and love. So if you are thinking about your family life a lot, if you're thinking about your home life, this is a massive time where you might Think about starting a family. You might think of uh, creating a new environment in your home life, or this can also be a great time for familial healing. So if you don't even have your own family, or maybe you do, either way, this is a great time for healing family connections and uh, creating deeper bonds with our family. You might be inclined to visit your family more this year. You might be inclined to, again, create more of your own family, expand your family, expand your home life, create more harmony here, because again, six is a harmony number. And it's also really connected to music as well. So this could also be a year where you're just really feeling more musical. Maybe you wanna use your voice more. Maybe you're wanting to create a more melodic life, one that you love, one that's full of romance, one that's full of joy and love. And it's again, harmonizing relationships. A lot of people do find that they get married in year sixes or they get engaged in year sixes or sometimes they find the love of their life or again, they're just healing more family type relationships. It's a big relationship year. So uh, twos, threes, and sixes are really big for relationships and then fours and sixes are really big for home life and home improvements and looking at your foundation. Sixes are also about looking at how much money am I saving up? Am I living harmoniously when it comes to my work and home life and then my income versus outcome or spending, I guess. I like the word outcome. I guess that means a totally different thing though, but still. 
you get what I mean. Um, since we're also in a year number eight right now with our 2024 year, when we take that eight energy and we marry it with the six energy that's affecting you this year, this gets a little bit more in depth about how you're going to be navigating this year. This unlocks infinite potential in your family life. If you are wanting to harmonize relationships within your family, this is the year to do it. If you are noticing friction within your family, this is the year for sorting those things out, creating tighter bonds, creating more um, connection and more understanding within our close personal relationships. It is an amazing year for manifesting a soulmate. It is an amazing year for manifesting, uh, getting married, getting engaged, uh, finding you know the perfect home and prioritizing your home life. So it's amazing for those things. A lot of people find that they also spend more time at home during a six year or they kind of just bring their home with them wherever they are. They find ways to make their their space home so that is the year number sixes and if you want to dive into your tarot reading for 2024 the timestamps are linked down below where you can pick your card and then get your personal prediction where we go so in depth on the different energies and the different happenings and events that will be in your year of 2024 and i'll see you there all right my year number sevens let's talk about your personal year number the sevens are huge spiritual journeys many people have a spiritual awakenings at this time many people do higher learning they either either are interested in taking more classes, diving deep within themselves. It's a self-discovery year. It's also an, a year for teaching, spreading your wisdom, spreading your knowledge, because this is a year where you're going to be learning so much. Your intuition is at its highest when you're in a year number seven. And it's also, again, a great time for diving deep into yourself, healing old wounds, healing um, other past issues, past traumas, and learning from them, gaining the lessons out, out of them so that you can grow. This is such a massive growth year, and it's so connected to spirituality, philosophy, learning, teaching, becoming the master of your life, and learning all those different things that are going to be the most important to you. It's also a very magical year. I would kind of describe this year as being the wizard year. This is you learning, diving deep, being in your hermit wizard cave, doing your magic, figuring out life and how it works and how you can excel and what it is that you need to know. Again, this is the spiritual awakening year of deep healing, deep transformation, deep learning, teaching. It is your wizard year. That is what the year of sevens are all about. A lot of people take new classes around this time. They get deep into reading, journaling, personal discovery, and uh, it's just diving deep. It's also a year where a lot of people are more in tune with their body and honoring the relaxation and the rejuvenation that they might need. Because before, in some of those previous years, especially like a year number four, that's like all about productivity and getting things done versus the seven. It's like, let's slow down and take a bit of a breather for a second. And even though we might still be pushing ourselves when it comes to learning and growing, it's a year where we're more in tune with, okay, let me just like come back a little bit into my cave and heal a little bit, get deeper into relaxation, take care of myself, the self-care type of year. So that is the year number seven. Since we're also in that year number eight with the 2024, when we marry these two energies together, this is going to affect you in the ways of unlocking infinite potential when it comes to your self-growth, your learning, unlocking spiritual gifts, unlocking your new philosophies and new belief systems, and unlocking the keys and secrets to life that are going to help you excel. So this is your wizard year that's connected to that infinite potential with that number eight number. So it's going to be a big year for you. My number sevens, this is huge. And if you're wanting to get your personal tarot reading, there's a timestamp link down below where you can go pick your card and then skip ahead to get your personal 2024 year prediction. We're going to go so in depth and I will see you there. Okay. My year number eights, if this is your year, this is so significant because 2024 in and of itself is a year number eight and you are year number eight. So together, this is unlocking a massive portal for you right now of infinite potential new opportunities. So since you're in a year number eight, this is your time of uh, increasing your finances. A lot of people feel like they have good luck when they're in a year number eight. They find that their finances, finances, finances can increase like 
twofold, threefold, tenfold even, depending on how much energy and focus that they're putting towards it. But this is an amazing year for up-leveling your career. It is amazing luck when it comes to unlocking new opportunities. Whenever you do something, it seems to turn out really well. And even if it doesn't, it's going to teach you so much to the point that the next time that you do it, you just learn so quickly, so fast, where you're able to overcome obstacles way easier than before. It's like you're in that portal energy and that portal year. And again, since we're also in that eight year right now and your year number eight, it's just going to be amplifying that energy even more for you. So since you have that number and that numerology going on here, this is such an amazing year where I highly recommend if you have great ideas that you're like, oh my gosh, that might be a really good idea. Pursue it this year because there is such amazing energy for growth, learning, and good luck when it comes to fortune, wealth, and expansion. It's also a really great year for travel when you're in a year number eight. And it is just such an amazing year again for that infinite potential for that expansion, great luck with money, being able to um, improve your material world as well. So if there's big things that you're wanting to purchase or invest in, this is usually a really great year to do so. So that is your year number eight. And we also have our tarot reading and all the timestamps linked down below so that you can pick your pile and skip to your personal uh, prediction for the year of 2024 with the tarot. All of that is linked down below. We're going to get so in depth and so in detail. And I'm really excited to see what it is that you create since you're in this infinite potential type of year with the number eights. They are such good luck, such good expansion. And I'm very excited to see what this year is going to bring for you. And I will see you in your tarot reading. All right, my year number nines. If you are in a year nine, nine is the last of the single digit numbers before we head back into number ones, which is a new beginning. So nines are all about that shedding stage. You might notice that you are finishing old projects, wrapping things up. You may also find that you're outgrowing your current shell. So if we think about a number nine, it's coming right before the rebirth. So if you think about yourself as maybe like a hermit crab, you're outgrowing your shell and now you're ready for something bigger. You're ready for something uh, better almost. You are about to shed your skin because you've outgrown those different things. This is a year where you might get really interested in decluttering cleaning stuff out, becoming more minimal, getting rid of old things. You might notice that you've outgrown old hobbies. You've outgrown old interests. And now you're like, wait a minute, those things just aren't fulfilling to me anymore. I've grown so much that I'm no longer the person that I used to be. And in these 10 year cycles, or I guess nine year cycles, you might look back on yourself nine-ish years ago, 10 years ago, and you might see like, oh my goodness, I have grown so much. I am such a different person than I ever was before. You've grown so much, you've learned so much. And again, there's probably new interests now popping up for you and they'll make themselves even more apparent in 2025 because 2025, you're gonna be in a year number one. And the number nines are that completion stage where you're completing all of those old aspects of yourself. You're integrating all the lessons that you've learned and now you are fully um, becoming. It's the full embodiment type of year. So all of the things that have accumulated over the last nine to 10 years have all accumulated to bring you to this point where now you get to fully encompass that energy. You've fully integrated those lessons. This is your integration year. And then next year is going to be the rebirth for you in 2025. So nines are massive for growth, ownership, looking at everything that you've done thus far and being like, wow, look how far I've come. I am ready for something new. This is the completion stage. This is also where um, it's the harvest year as well. So anything that you've been working on in the last nine to 10 years, this is the harvest year where all of those things, you get to um, reap the benefits of all of that growth, all of that doing, especially since you just came out of an eight year. Eight years are usually when we uplevel our finances, we have really good luck and it's usually really great for career and business. Now you're in a nine year where you're like, oh, I get to, reap the benefits of all of that hard work that I've been doing. And now it's that integration stage. You're absorbing it. You can think about it kind of like the nine of pentacles in tarot. If you look at that card, it is the abundance absorbing those fruits of your labor. But now 
once you have all those fruits, it's time for you to expand. It's time for you to have a rebirth because now you're about to outgrow this old shell. So then it's going to be time for a new era for you. So nines are significant. They are massive. They are huge. And when you marry this with the eight number, since we're in an eight year, this is the, um, sequential kind of, you know, ladder that we have. So this is still giving you that infinite potential of that year eight that you just came out of in 2023. This is still giving you a little bit of that extra oomph, that extra infinite potential and good luck while you're now still reaping the rewards and reaping the benefits in your year nine. So if you didn't notice the abundance coming to you last year in 2023, it's going to be coming for you in 2024 because you're still getting that extra energy. It's still flowing in into your year number nine. So that is your um, personal year number and the meaning behind it. And if you're wanting to dive into the tarot prediction, the timestamps are linked down below with all of the uh, cards where you can pick your card and then skip right ahead to your tarot prediction where we're going to go so in depth into your year and what you can expect. So I will see you there. All right. So my master number 11s, let's dive into what you can expect whenever we're in a master number year, it is so significant and 11s are the portal. If you've ever heard of the significance of seeing the number 1111 or seeing 111, it is an angel number. And this is a master number when it is affecting you and is your personal year number number. It's also connected to the number two, because again, the one and the one, they break down into a number two. So I would also highly recommend watching what the number two year means, because it will also have significance for you. But since you're also the 11, this also has significance and it's even more significant because it amplifies. The 11s are the gateway. Whenever you see an 11, it's a gateway. And when you walk through it, you will never be the same. This is a time where we are mastering old lessons. This is a time where we unlock new opportunities in our life. This is a time where we can manifest better and easier than ever. As long as we are open to expanding ourselves and stepping outside of our comfort zone. When we think about the 11, whenever it's a new gateway to walk into, it's that gateway portal. We've never been on the other side. And so there could be fear of that. You might fear stepping outside of your comfort zone this year. You might be challenged this year to step outside of your comfort zone. You might be put in uncomfortable situations at times, but the secret miracle behind the master number 11 is that any of these challenges and obstacles that come your way this year is the universe's divine lesson for you to help you manifest whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. Like let's say you're trying to manifest being a business owner. The universe is going to give you all these portals your way to help bring you into being that business owner. And it's going to give all these yeah, new portals that you can walk into, but it's going to require you stepping outside of your comfort zone. It's going to require you heading it or facing it head on. There might be different fears or doubts that you need to overcome to get to that manifestation. But the year number 11, master number 11, it's time for you to master those lessons and master those challenges. And the universe will never bring you something that you cannot handle. So trust me in the fact that you can handle this. Some people find these a little bit challenging of years to be in, although they are the highest of miracles. They are the highest of manifestations. So this is such an amazing, powerful year to be in. So use the energy wisely. And when you can be aware that you're in this 11 year, you can know that, okay, the universe is going to throw some portals my way for me to really step outside of my comfort zone to face and break down these old fears and limitations and doubts that I've had. So now you can embrace them so that you can get to the other side of that portal and be taken faster than ever to your desires, to your manifestations. That is master number 11. And since it's married with the year number eight, oh my goodness, we're in the year number eight, which is now when we add that together with your personal year number 11, this is going to amplify the infinite potential that you have to manifest huge things in your life this year. So master number 11, take advantage of these energies, okay? And with that being said, if you want to know more about what you can expect in the year of 2024, I have linked down below the timestamps where you can pick your card and skip to your personal tarot prediction, where we're going to go so in depth with the different events and the different energies that are going to be in your life personally. So I'll see you there. All right. My master number 22s. let's talk about what you can expect 
in this next year. I am one of you. I am a master number 22 this year. So let's talk about all the different energies and what is going on. So master number 22 is also connected to the number four in numerology. So number fours will also be very significant for you. And I highly recommend listening to the number four numerology as well, because that's going to be like the underlying energy. However, you are in master number 22. So master number 22 is heavily about productivity, getting things done. You are in a portal window right now where your energy is going to excel with any ideas that you have. This is a self-discipline year of self-improvement, leveling yourself up. This is a huge year where you are building a new foundation of who you are. Your whole personality is reaching whole new heights. You might have been, um, recently like a little bit self-critical over yourself or maybe really interested in improving different aspects of yourself this is all playing into that master number 22 type of energy which is helping you get to that higher level this is a year of increasing your confidence of increasing your whole foundation of making better boundaries in your life so boundaries when it comes to um boundaries that you establish with other people, boundaries that you establish within your business or your career or within your schedule and within your time, creating better time management. This is also better management when it comes to your energy, your resources, and um, your own personal schedule. This is a huge year where you can manifest massive change in your life. This is a manifesting portal. Any master number helps you with manifestation and excels and amplifies the energy of manifestation. So if you're wanting to manifest a higher, greater, better version of yourself, this is the year to do it. This is the year where a lot of people are also attracted to taking like um, programs or classes that are going to develop them into the highest, best uh, version of themselves. You might be really interested in learning and maybe you just want to take all the classes, read all the books, do all the work. This is such a work year. Some people become workaholics in year number 22s and it's a huge action type of year. So you might also be interested in doing more active things. Maybe you're going to go to the gym more. Maybe you're going to take your health more seriously. Maybe you're just going to be proactive about all different things in your life. This is such a productive year. It's also a year generally where a lot of people feel really good because they just feel like they're getting their foundation together. They feel like they know themselves better. Their confidence is improving because of all the inner self-improvement work that you'll be doing this year. Again, a great year for business as well, setting down foundations. It's a really great year for home life as well. So if you are thinking about improving your home or moving or setting your roots down even stronger within your career, business, finances, or home life, this is such an amazing year for setting those roots down even deeper. And master number 22 makes miracles happen. However, if you do notice resistances, master numbers, they will usually attract a little bit more lessons their way, but, okay, but I know some people when they hear the word lessons, they're like, no, why would the universe be so cruel? I used to think that when you receive lessons that it was like a cruel thing from the universe. It's like, come on, seriously, you're just gonna throw more, more resistance. However, it's not. Lessons are one of the biggest miracles that you should embrace always and hear me out as to why, because any time that the universe sends you a lesson, it's trying to upgrade you. It's like when you're going to school and you're trying to graduate to the next grade, you wanna learn how to read, you wanna learn how to write, you wanna learn how to do math, you wanna learn all these different things. This is helping you upgrade and it's helping you up level. So when you're in a master year, like master number 11 or 22, this is a time where you're going to attract more lessons your way because it's also a time where you're going to grow more than you ever have. And if you're ever trying to manifest something, the universe is like, okay, if you want to manifest that and you're going to manifest it quicker than ever, cause you're in a master year, this is about you mastering that thing. And in master number 22, you're mastering your um, health. You're going to be more focused on that. You're going to be mastering your foundation, your business, and all these different things, your money and your uh, personality, who you are, your boundaries, your values, everything about who you are and what you want to create. You're mastering that. Therefore, the universe is going to be throwing different lessons your way to help you upgrade, to help you learn what you need to so that you can propel yourself faster than ever to manifesting those things. And when you're in a master number year, usually you manifest very fast. Okay. 
but through that, usually we need to learn very quickly, move through lessons and challenges very quickly, so embrace them. The way that you move through challenges and lessons easier and faster is to embrace them and see them as that they're helping you, they're working for you, they are there to help you excel and to help you upgrade. So that is what we have for you, my master number 22s. Again, make sure you also check out the number four. It's very correlated, although we touched on some of the similar things in this because they are very similar numbers. However, the master number just makes it more amplified and it's more of a mastery over that energy. So. That is what we have there. And if you want to dive into your tarot card prediction, there's gonna be timestamps linked down below where you can choose your card and then skip right ahead to your 2024 prediction where we're gonna go so in detail with the tarot and the oracle cards. And I am so excited to see you there. And let's go ahead and dive right in. Hello, my loves, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we have the 2024 year ahead prediction. So if you are curious what the year of 2024 has in store for you, this is gonna be it. We are going to be connecting with spirit, the universe, to get information for your highest good at this time to help reveal the different significant events and different happenings that you can expect in this next year. If you are new to these videos, I'm gonna give you a quick little explanation about how it works. So I have five different groups in front of me. Over here we have group one with some citrine on top, group two with some amethyst, group three with some fluorite, group four, we have some larimar. And then group number five, we have some selenite. So again, take a moment, pause the video if you need to, to find the pile that's calling to you the most. You wanna tap into your intuition for this. You don't wanna necessarily pick the pile that's just the prettiest, but you wanna pick the the pile that you just feel drawn to, you feel called to, it's just sticking out to you, which might be the prettiest pile for you, or it just might be something that's just an unexplainable calling towards that group. If you have a hard time picking a pile based on the visuals, then I highly recommend closing your eyes and waiting for a number between one and five to pop into your head. And then that's gonna be your intuition speaking to you. And that would be the pile that is going to reveal your year of 2024. The reason why this works is because your intuition is so powerful that your intuition knows which group resonates with you the most, right? And so when you choose your group, it's going to reveal all the different energies and events that you can expect in your life because again, your intuition will be called towards it. So that is how this video works. Take as much time as you need to find your group, but remember your intuition usually speaks to you really fast. So it's kind of more that immediate feeling, that immediate calling of the group that stands out to you the most. And there's timestamps linked down below in the comment box and the description box that you can skip right ahead to your personal reading for the year of 2024. This is gonna be huge. We're gonna to try to get as much information as possible for you. So this might end up being a pretty long reading, but it's gonna be exciting. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into this video. All right, my group number ones, if you chose this pile, this is gonna be your 2024 year ahead prediction. Let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, okay, my group ones, there is some really clear things going on. We have two of these pentacle cards and right when I flipped over this king of pentacles, I just had so many downloads for you that this year is gonna be really significant when it comes to career, money, the opportunities that you get to expand your material world, your material assets and it just expanding financially, expanding in your career. Usually the King of Pentacles talks about owning a business. So some of you might be business owners or you might be moving into a job that you know is going to be really beneficial and that it's probably gonna pay off really well because this card is like promotions. We're getting to the top. Um, if you are a business owner, this is tons of success and feeling like you are on top of things and feeling like you are climbing that ladder. Like this is CEO status <laughs> type of energy. Um, so there might be different things, projects that you're working on where you get to excel within your career. And it also seems like maybe there's been some big investments that you've made into your career. Like maybe you've been really kind of waiting for something to happen for you to bring you to this next level because this four of pentacles tells me that maybe you've been waiting around a little bit for things to start moving forward for you. And maybe you've had like financial tightness where it kind of felt like 
you were really kind of holding on to what it is that you have, but you didn't necessarily feel super abundant with it. And possibly we didn't feel like we could expand as much as we wanted to because we're sort of just waiting for the progress. Like we've done these investments and then we're like, okay, are they going to pay off? Like I'm putting every last bit of energy, last bit of money towards my vision, towards my dreams. Is it going to pay off? Is this going to be lucrative? And maybe some of you have also been saving up for a really big purchase when it comes to something that you really want to own or when it comes to your business, perhaps you were saving for that and then you're like, please let this pay off. Please let this be worth it. And the year of 2020, looks incredibly powerful for you when it comes to career, business, and money and personal investments. I do think that you're going to be getting to a point where you feel very abundant. You're seeing the fruits of your labor and you can relax a lot more knowing that, okay, I'm in a good position now. And I also think that you are becoming so much more financially aware. So when it comes to having this nine of wands being reversed here, there's been different like scars and wounds that you've had, maybe with things kind of not quite going how you wanted them to in the past. And they were great learning lessons for you. The year of 2024, you were going to have so many realizations of why you needed to go through that in order to get where you are going. It has taught you so much about how to hold abundance, how to make smart investments, how to uphold, um, projects and to finish projects and to connect with the right people, how to communicate properly. Like you've just been learning so much about what you should invest into, what your worth is. Oh my goodness. I just got a huge um, feeling from spirit that perhaps you were undermining yourself. And this is a year where I just see you kind of maybe increasing your prices, asking for a raise and getting it, you know, like I feel this is the year where you deserve to make more and you've been maybe, you know, putting in so much work and not seeing the greatest payoff. And maybe that's because we weren't asking for the raise that we deserve. Or maybe if you own your own business and you're making your prices, maybe you were kind of, again, undermining yourself, undermining your worth, your value. I think that this year you're going to be realizing so much more about what your value is right? I feel like you're really particular. You're very detail oriented, which sometimes makes you a little bit critical of yourself. You can be a little bit hard on yourself at times because there's almost this perfectionist attitude that you might have. And you might always think like, no, it's never good enough. So I can't charge what I would normally charge because, you know, I'm not on this level or I could have learned that better. Or I could be doing this better. And so I feel like because you're more focused on all of those things that maybe aren't quite where you want them to be. Again, you've been maybe undermining yourself a little bit, but this is a year where I think you're learning so much more about the value you do bring. What is that value? And I think that you're going to do a overhaul of your career and of the money that you make. And you're just kind of stepping up the game here in 2024 and getting back what you put in getting back what you truly deserve. This seven of cups that we have over here is so important too, because you've had your eggs in so many baskets. I feel like you're the type of person who has a million different things going on at once. That's you. And you're just all over the place, which is good because I feel like you have so many gifts, so many talents, a plethora of ideas to the point where your head's constantly in the clouds and you probably have notebooks that follow you around where, where you're just like writing down ideas constantly. You're like, oh, I just thought of this. That's a good idea. Oh, this too, this too. This is also a year where I feel like you're going to hone down on the most important things to you and focus on, you know, just a couple of those most important biggest eggs in the basket. And as you narrow down your focus, it is going to help you excel in those areas. I do see you also just getting a lot done in general. Like I see you even still in 2024, you do have your eggs in a lot of different baskets. However, you're kind of narrowing it down to what's the most important, which will help you um, increase the momentum on those things so that they actually get done. I feel like there's different ideas that you've had maybe accumulating for quite some time and Maybe it wasn't the right time to take action on them. Maybe it wasn't the right time to invest your time, energy, and money into them because maybe, again, we weren't feeling that prosperous when it came to our time, our energy, and our money. Perhaps it's just like you felt a little bit overwhelmed. Again, this year, 
I see your time management being so much more on point. You're going to be discovering, okay, what are those important things? What are the things that I want to truly bring to life in 2024? And I see you just fully dedicating to what those things are. And oh, we also have the Two of Swords being reversed, which is an amazing position for this particular card because it indicates taking the blindfold off. Like if you felt unclear about your vision, unclear about what your next steps are. This is a year where you're also, your vision is coming together so much more. The, um, the steps of what you need to do and where you need to go are going to become so clear for you. You are healing old wounds from the past, different scars that maybe kind of set you back or tore you down a little bit, maybe tore down your confidence within, you know, your career and your, um, business and finances there could have been certain things that that just kind of were a little bit of like a like oh that's another stab that's another uh, that's another annoyance this is a year where i also feel like you're healing those things and you are realizing the value that they brought you because everything has value and i know sometimes it's like like we don't want to hear that because we're just like no i just want to be down about this thing but no i mean like i see you going on this healing journey where there's so much growth and so much gratitude for what you've learned and what you've been through. And oh, look at this chariot card we have. Things are gonna propel forward for you faster than ever. I feel like you're gonna be, this is a year of moving forward. I can tell you that. Like this is not a year of being stuck, okay? Like the stuck cards that we have, all of these are talking about how the stuckness is being healed and you're no longer going to be stuck, okay? Um, Things are gonna propel forward and something that you've been waiting on, an idea that you've had for so long that's just been not moving forward, is moving forward, it's propelling forward. The different challenges that you once met, those are clearing and going away. Um, for some reason, I'm also seeing you traveling to a really big city in 2024. Uh, I feel like there's a big trip that you're gonna have to make to, I I'm getting like a, like a city, or it's just a, a place that people travel to. It's like a big, hot destination that people travel to. It might not necessarily be a city city, but it's, um, Spirit's telling me that a lot of people go there, you know? So it's either a condensed population, such as a city like, you know, like New York, LA, places like that, or this could be just a po very popular destination, you know, where a lot of travelers go and you're investing your time in going there. Um, and I think that this is something I feel like it's tied to your career a little bit for you, group one. And it's also interesting that you chose the citrine, that you were drawn to this citrine because citrine is so connected to career and money. And this whole reading is making me feel like that's such a big focus for you in 2024. Maybe you have a lot of goals when it comes to business, career, and money and time management and getting things done like this feeling of accomplishment. Oh my gosh, 2024, one way I could describe it is the year of accomplishment for you. Citrine is a crystal that helps with attracting abundance, wealth, career success. It is such a powerful stone when it comes to abundance and wealth, especially in business and also creating confidence. So if you're wanting to create confidence and to know your value, this is a crystal that helps with all those realizations. If you are wanting to get citrine, you can get them pretty much at any crystal shop, but I do also have these ones on my crystal shop if you are curious at all. Um, and let's dive into our next few cards here. So let's see what else you can expect in your 2024 year. Emotions are running high. Super moon. Oh, whenever super moon shows up, it is a very powerful energy. Um, there's going to be something really big going on for you in this next year, what, where it's going to excite you. It's going to propel your emotions so much to where there's some sort of exciting either project opportunity or event or celebration happening in 2024, where I almost just see you, um, so excited with energy to where it might be hard to fall asleep during that time, either when you get that news or when it's like right around the corner, when something's happening, there's just such a potent type of energy. I think that there's going to be multiple of these like super events going on for you in 2024 where your emotions are just like, 
oh my goodness. And I, I keep getting this feeling like you're so excited to call your friends, your family, the people that you love. You're just so excited to like spill the news, spill the beans. And it's like, oh my God, guess what just happened? Guess what is happening now, right now? Guess what opportunity just came up? Guess what just occurred? It's like, you're so excited to share this news. And I see this happening. I feel like this is gonna happen about three or four times throughout 2024 for you. There's about three or four really significant events or opportunities happening for you that it's like, you're gonna be so excited to spill the beans on this. I feel like some of them are um, involved in your career. Some of them, I feel like most of them, most of them are involved in your career. Some of them, again, maybe like one or two of them might be involved with something else. We're gonna get more information on that um, in a bit, but the next card that we have, we have the new moon. Oh my gosh, we have the super moon and the new moon coming up for you. These are both incredibly powerful. New moons are new chapters, a new start is coming, and these are like a new wave, a new era. You're stepping into an entirely new era in 2024. There's something entirely new happening here and it's stepping into the unknown. So the new moons, they're always dark, right? There's no uh, sunlight on them. That means it's a new phase. We have not treaded these waters before. We can't even see what we're jumping into because it's so new that it's like, oh my God, I don't even know what it's gonna be like. It's like, it's this uncovering, it's a discovery of something new, entirely new chapter that you've never even walked down before. Um, and I feel like this is very much on a personal level there's gonna be so much personal discovery, discovering more about who you are, solidifying that, getting down to the details of like, okay, what do I value? Who am I? What is my purpose? What am I bringing to the world? It's like you're defining that to a whole new level. And there's a new chapter here. This is a new chapter in your career. Some of you, this could also be a new chapter in your love life as well. And that could also be tied into the emotions are running high. Okay, next card. We also have new moon in cancer. You and your loved ones are safe. You're coming out of your shell this year, my love. Oh my gosh. When it comes to your emotions, who you are, there's a whole reset and rebirth happening here um, within your emotions and coming out of your shell. For one, the um, crab related to cancer always reminds me of a little bit of the hermit in a way who, and a hermit crab is a type of crab, I guess. So anyway, they're in their shell. They might be working on something behind the scenes, not talking about it. And this could be a year where that's gonna come to fruition. It's a new moon, it's a new chapter. You're walking into the unknown. You're walking into a new shell. You've upgraded your shell. It's something bigger, it's something better. You're walking into a bigger version of you. You are expanding on a personal level. There is so much growth here. The new moon is again, walking into that new phase and, um, kind of like a whole new discovery going on. I also feel like this is you coming out of your shell. So if you've held yourself back in certain ways, held yourself back from opportunities, from um, different desires, because maybe there was fear or doubt around them, um, you're overcoming that and coming out of your shell. What is that shell that you've been in? Where have you been holding yourself back, keeping yourself in hiding, and not taking action, not moving forward. Where has that been in your life? For a lot of you, I feel like this deals with your career where you know maybe you've been thinking about taking that next step into that expansion, into that next level. This is your year for that. This is your year for that. New moon in Cancer can also indicate new dynamics in your home life, which could indicate a move so some of you, you might actually be moving or there's just a new expansion of your foundation in some way. So this could be um, redoing your home, redoing the aesthetic that you have around you, your environment. There's like a new beginning when it comes to the environment that you live in. So yeah, tons of stuff going on here. Let's dive into some more cards here for you. I'm also gonna adjust how I'm sitting. <laughs> I'm sitting in such a weird way right now, but yeah, anyway. Oh my gosh, we have Chiron, wounded healer. Um, you might be called to bring something new to the world when it comes to areas in which you've struggled before. 
areas in which you've had to do great learning and great transformation. And you might be bringing those realizations because I feel like you're, you are healing where you've been wounded before for one, like your year of 2024 is going to be so different from 2023. So let's talk about, let's dissect this. 2023, there's been certain things that have occurred that have been like repetitive wounds for you. For some of you, this could be in the area of finances or making bad investments or having to learn a lot about projects and working with other people. And perhaps we've learned a lot when it comes to how we should communicate, how we get people on the same page of, uh, as us, um, what our worth is, what we should actually be charging, what our value is, um, overcoming other personal obstacles, personal hurdles, and other events that have been a little bit of wounds for you. This could even be really old wounds that happened way before 2023, but they've kind of been on repeat for you. It's kind of like, you know, they're, they're, they've come up again. 2024, you are doing massive shifts where you are healing those wounds. And some, like, some of those, maybe you've already just recently healed, but I feel like a lot of them you're healing within the first like three to four months of 2024, maybe even five months. The, some of these are like really big that you're working on and the type of transformation that you're going to make is going to be so valuable. It has so much information within it that you may find ways to make those things part of your purpose now in helping others with similar events, similar things. I feel like you're going to have really potent stories to tie in to your, what you're bringing to the world. You're gonna have really potent stories of your transformation and you can, you have this ability now to kind of like help others in that same realm, okay? Next card that we have, we have Virgo. Oh my goodness, this is your year of getting stuff done. Oh, when it comes to things that you've put off, you're getting it done. When it comes to your own organization, organizing your time, your resources, your energy, everything that you have, your organization this year, you are totally done with um, having so much clutter, having disorganization, trying to squeeze things all into the same plate. This is a year where I think you're going to be figuring out your schedule to a whole other level. You are going to be figuring out um, your how much energy you have, what your, again, value, that's coming up again with Virgo, your value, what you bring. This is also your year, year of healing because Virgo is also a healer card and, or <laughs> I should say a uh, constellation. And yeah, I see you getting so much more organized, so much more put together. Your communication is up leveling too because Virgo is connected to Mercury. Mercury is the planet of communication, writing, especially when it's with Virgo, writing, getting detailed things. This could also talk about um, starting a blog or writing a book or doing something when it comes to writing or perhaps communication. Um, this can also be learning as well, but usually Virgo starts to get more towards the teacher aspect and the healer aspect. So that could be um, something that ties into your year of 2024 as well, where maybe you're thinking about teaching or writing or sharing a particular story that can help other people. Healing your own wounds and then using that information to then teach and getting more, way more organized. Oh my goodness, like Virgo is like, if y'all know astrology, y'all you'll, you'll know Virgo is very much on organization and getting things together, getting their life together. Next card that we have is the first quarter moon, making decisions, obstacles, taking action and momentum. Okay, this ties in with our tarot so much, making decisions. So seven of cups, you got a lot of stuff going on all the time. I, I feel like you're going to be prioritizing certain things and it's going to really help you stay on track and really help you organize your time and your energy to actually get things done. You know, when we got way too much going on, nothing ends up getting done. So uh, I also feel like you're gonna do a huge clean out when it comes to 
your projects, your ideas. You're going to be figuring out again, what's the most important to you, but you're also going to be doing a clean out when it comes to your personal belongings. I feel like you're going to be getting rid of a lot of things doing maybe just like giving stuff away. Um, donating things. Like I feel like you're getting rid of a lot because I feel like you're wanting to, um, minimize, minimize things, obstacles as well. Um, those other obstacles that you were facing, the chariot talks about overcoming those. So this is a massive shift for you compared to 2023. Also, um, there's different obstacles that you might be already foreseeing for 2024, different things that you're like, I know I'm going to have to overcome that. I know I'm going to have to face that. Taking action, gaining momentum is going to be your best friend. Taking action to um, sort of, you know, be able to foresee these different obstacles and taking action prior in order to just prepare yourself and get your best foot forward. And that's going to help you so much, like taking proactive, proactive action. That's, that's what's coming to my head, proactive action. And you're going to notice that things unfold very smoothly for you. If you are taking that proactive approach to the obstacles that you're sort of foreseeing there. But at the same time, I really do feel group one that the obstacles that you're facing in 2024 are, um, like, it's almost like you're wanting to face them. You're wanting to get over it. You're wanting to have your best year. And because of that proactive approach, these issues aren't going to be as big or as like hard as other issues you faced before. Because again, you have this more proactive, like foreseeing type of approach rather than just like turning a blind eye and then waiting for them to pop up. And they're like, Oh my God, <laughs> they're there. Uh, so yeah, anyway. Proactive is going to be your best friend. Then we also have this card right here, the square. So resistance, struggle, obstacles coming up again, experience, effort, learning, conflict, obsession, problems. So there is a vision that you are wanting to bring to life in 2024. There is some different twists and turns when it comes to this thing that you're wanting to do, this thing that you're wanting to create. There's going to be different other learning curves. However, I do feel like you already kind of foresee what they are and that proactive action is going to be your best friend. I feel like you are learning a lot when it comes to partnerships, collaborations, how to be proactive when it comes to explaining your vision and trying to understand somebody else's vision so that you can work together more efficiently. Proactive is the word that like spirit just keeps saying over and over again. I feel like your guides are coming through. In fact, your spirit guides are coming through saying, be proactive, be proactive, be proactive. You already foresee different things. You already kind of have a little inkling of it. Be proactive. Don't just sweep it under the rug, hoping that like, like, oh no, it won't be an issue. It's totally fine. We'll just figure it out. It'll unfold naturally. No. Oh my God. No. Because when you do that, when you let it unfold naturally, we don't communicate and we don't listen to those little inklings that we have. Of course, we shouldn't like get over obsessed of these little inklings and then like worry ourselves to the bone being like, oh my God, I got a small inkling of this and then this and then this. Like don't get overwhelmed by them. That's not the message at all. But when you do have certain inklings that you kind of feel you're like, I could see that maybe turning into an issue later on, just be proactive about it because you're going to save yourself so many headaches if you struggle with headaches, that's connected to squares in astrology. Um, if you do struggle with headaches at times and you, you kind of feel headaches coming on, be proactive with the different obstacles and struggles because that is an energetic effect of ignoring those little inklings and sweeping things under the rug. And then it builds up that tension and that pressure. We might get headaches. We might, you know, those obstacles are just going to accumulate. And then we have to work around a big corner rather than being proactive in the beginning. Like if you're proactive in the beginning, you kind of get to go on this fluid motion where things are kind of just like, you know, um, you know, going with the flow. It's, it's going with the flow more versus, you know, if you ignore those little inklings, you just keep moving forward without addressing those little things along the way. All of a sudden we're going to have this big turning point where things are going to have to massively change very quickly in order for things to continue. That's why we get this square shape. It's like this huge oh, redirection. And then, oh, I ignored that again. Redirection. It's like, you know, those big, it, it'll accumulate to a big turning point. So anyway, yeah, you get the point. So instead of doing a 90 degree angle, instead we could do that 360 degree thing where things are just naturally with the flow. We're listening to those little callings. We're being proactive about stuff 
there's much more fluidity there. So diving into the next few cards, I'm also going to restart my camera just so that we don't cut out on time. So I'll be right back. All right, my loves. Okay. Next card, we have the illusionist. Oh my goodness. Divert, spellbind, revamp, unveil. Um, Ooh, there might be a rebranding that you have going on in 2024. A rebranding. I think that you, there's more to you that is being uncovered this year. There's a revamp. I feel like there's going to be a revamp in your home life. Possibly like your aesthetic, your environment. There's also a revamp in yourself. I feel like you are wanting to refresh who you are, your self image. There might be a, like even this mirror kind of looking um, background. This is like a mirror. And I almost see you looking in the mirror being like, you know what? I want a new version of me to come out. I, I, there's like a, a new you accumulating and you're becoming more confident in who you are, allowing yourself to kind of come out of that shell again a little bit more, unveil coming out of that shell a little bit more to become more confident. Um, I also feel like you're very, like this is a year where you're done being the illusionist. You don't want to put on different faces, different masks, hide yourself around other people. I feel like you may have a certain tendency to um, hide yourself around certain people who you feel like you might be judged by or you feel like they might not understand you. You have a tendency to kind of put, put up a veil and you're like, you know what, let me just not even show that side of myself. I don't think they're going to get it anyway. Let me just put up what they want to see. No, I feel like you are so done with that. Even me saying this, like, I feel like you're already thinking like, yep, yeah, that's been on my mind. I don't want to like put up that veil anymore. I just want to be authentic and not care as much what other people think about me. Because you know what? Those other people, they're, they're thinking about probably what you think of them. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter. Just like, just be you, right? Just be you. And that way you can connect with the most authentic people. That way you feel seen, you know, the authenticity is so much more liberating, so much more freeing. And even if people don't like us, it's like, okay, well, not everyone's going to like you anyway. So why not be authentic in the process? And that way, you know, authentically who does like you and who doesn't, right? Okay. We also have the archer focus, align, pivot, surrender. Um, you are aiming for something. You have certain goals that you're wanting to reach. And I do feel like there's going to be a lot of action taking. Uh, this card reminds me a lot of Sagittarius again, cause it's the archer bow and arrow. There's a lot of Sagittarius energy here. So I do feel like there's a big target that you want to reach. This is also reminding me of travel as well, like focusing and aligning to maybe a place that you want to visit in the world this year. I definitely see that happening. I see you going there and I see all that working out. And I also see you pivoting your approach because you know where you want to end up and you know that there's different pivots that you need to make in order to get to that destination, in order to get to that place. So I definitely see some like realignment and, um, you know, really putting in that work and that effort and that focus, which is going to bring you to again, new heights. We also have the mystic card coming up for you. Oh, this is so fun. So no seek, contemplate, um, philosophize, philosophize. I feel like I always say that word wrong. I don't know, but this is like the philosophy card. You're, you are gaining a, a better understanding of the universe, of yourself, your belief systems. Ooh, oh, I got goosebumps right now. You are connecting deeper with how the universe works. You might be diving deeper into manifestation, learning how to manifest and align yourself. Um, and, oh, you are like figuring out the secrets that were once missing for you when it came to manifestation, creating a reality, working with the energies of the universe, um, doing all of that. I feel like you are aligning so much better in those aspects and in those areas. So let's go ahead and dive into some more cards for you. My group ones. Let's see. What else do we have for 2024 for you? We talked a lot about career in this one for you. We also have the temple path. There's a big goal that you're wanting to reach. I also think temple path is like cleansing too. Broken heart. What is not working out for you this year? Let's dive into this broken heart a little bit here. Temple path. Oh, oh. There is healing when it comes to different disappointments that you've had. 
there is deep healing. The nines are sticking out to me right here. I feel like you've had to make very different choices in your love life in the recent years. Very different choices. Um, and you might even still have like unknown wounds from something in your past. You might also get into healing and then teaching around relationships or doing just some big personal journey and learning when it comes to relationships. Um, the temple path as well. There's different things that you're wanting to cleanse yourself of. Oh, cleansing out different attachments to the past, different fears that come up around your past. Different fears that come up around your past that's being healed. I feel like pulling a card from this deck to get some more info on this one. I feel like there might still be just a couple wounds from past experiences that, yeah, inner soul call led the mystic of mystics coming up again, living courageously, the rose thread. So different things that you're maybe still threaded to or you feel like might still have a little bit of a tie to you. There's something that still feels like it's a little bit of a tie and maybe you're still letting these old wounds dictate how you move into your future. Those wounds are still somehow coming up sometimes where it might be a little bit of a block. We still feel like threaded onto it where um, that pain maybe stops us from certain things. That pain might have caused like, like fears about stepping into your authenticity, stepping into the greatest version of yourself. This is a year of healing that. This is a year of, it's interesting that the temple path came out first because this one is like a cleanse, cleansing those things, taking the high road, up-leveling yourself and not letting these old things kind of like still have a hold on you. Because the rose thread, the love, the rose is love, right? And having a thread, there's still some sort of thread that's like maybe um, holding you back. This is a year of freeing yourself of that. Oh, and then we have the second bloom. The second bloom. So where you, where you've bloomed before. Ooh, I'm getting a whole message. I feel like you've bloomed before. You've allowed yourself to blossom. You came out of your shell before. When you did that, when you opened up like that, it led you to this. 2024 is your year for your second bloom to allow yourself out of your shell again, but this time I feel like it's going to be safe, right? And not that it wasn't safe before, it, but it, you know, it, it wasn't the right thing. It led to this. This time I feel like you've learned so much through that. This is a second chance. It's never too late. New possibilities. You are healing and now it's time to rebloom. Now it's time to bloom again and realize like, hey, I've learned so much, I've grown so much. It's gonna be different this time. It's not gonna be the same thing. It's going to be different. So there is like a, there's a rewrite happening here. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into some more cards for you. <laughs> We're just doing all the cards today. Let's see my group ones. What else do we have? The warrior. There is um, a sense of drive within you this year. Speak truth, being authentic. Oh my gosh, when it comes to being scared to speak your truth, being scared to say what it is that you want and need, that's changing. Your fifth chakra, your throat chakra is opening up 2024. Uh, learning how to speak more authentically, being open, speaking your truth, feeling safe and comfortable to speak your truth, to be who you are, and being the warrior, not being afraid anymore to speak your truth. Owning it, feeling like, okay, I'm liberated. Like this is such a liberation. You're liberating your voice in 2024. Okay. And that's going to allow you to approach things from an entirely different place. Okay. And let's dive into some Astro Dice, and then we're also going to take out this little Oracle deck as well. So, wow. So much energy is already. So first we're going to take our Zodiac Sign Dice. We're going to roll this one three times to get the top three most prominent Zodiac Signs in your life, okay, during 2024. This could also be a reflection of your own Zodiac. So we have Taurus coming up. Taurus, again, Taurus is going to be big for you. Do you already know some Taurus people? Because 
Taurus is going to be coming into your life. You might even meet a significant Taurus um, in this next year. Taurus is also reminding me of your home environment as well. It's very connected to aesthetic and comfort and money and excelling things. I think that there's going to be a whole up level in who you are with that Taurus energy. Sagittarius energy coming through. So if you know any Sagittariuses, if you are a Sagittarius, that's a very prominent... Look, we had Taurus coming up twice. Now we have Sagittarius coming up twice. Sag is also connected to travel. It is also connected to expansion, good luck, philosophy, um, all of that. So let's see what else we have. We also have Scorpio. So Taurus, Sagittarius, and Scorpio energy are very prominent for you going into this next year. Again, just a little recap, that Taurus energy, money, wealth, love, beauty, all of that, that is excelling. And people of the, the zodiac sign of Taurus are gonna be prominent. Um, Sagittarius is gonna be prominent. So Sagittarius energy would be, again, that travel, that expansion, it's good luck, it's going deeper into philosophy, learning, and it's also a teacher energy. Then we have Scorpio, which is going in the depths, learning deep. Um, it's also awakening of our sexual energies. So there might be more attraction, more passion going on in your life as well. In 2024, this is also a sign of shared assets. So there could be um, collaborations coming up for you. Or if you have a partner, there might be something where maybe you're both investing in the same thing. Maybe um, both of you are kind of helping support each other. That can be another aspect of Scorpio too, because it's kind of like the conjoining of energies. It's connected to that. And also with Scorpio, again, this could be talking about just significant Scorpio people in your life as well. So let's go ahead and roll all of these together to get some more info. We have Scorpio coming up again. Isn't that weird? We had Taurus twice, Sag twice, Scorpio twice. Okay. We have Jupiter, which is amazing. So Jupiter in Scorpio in the second house. You are expanding your money, my love. Money is expanding for you. There might even be a big investment, a big purchase that you are making in this next year. I also see you putting more money into your bank account, into your savings, because that's also a major aspect of the second house, putting money into your savings. Your material world, I see you investing in material things, so making your environment more beautiful, more expansion there. Um, this could be expanding your home life in some way, even though home life is a little bit more connected to the fourth house, but um, occasionally it can indicate like some expansions materially, including home, career, money, assets, and different things like that. So tons of expansion and transformation there. I wouldn't be surprised if some of this does happen in collaboration with other people or I'm also just seeing like uh, money coming in in unknown ways. Like not, not, not that you don't know where it's coming from, but like, un like unexpected. You don't see it right now, but there's new paths forming that will happen and transpire in 2024, where it's going to be like these new paths of like, oh, that's how I can make more. And then again, knowing your worth, following your passion is going to be a huge way of making more money as well. So let's go ahead and dive into some of these cards right here. So my group one's my citrine group, your 2024 year. I cannot believe it. What else does spirit want to say for you? I also do feel like pulling out one last deck after this. So focus on the inward connection of your divine being. Discovering more about who you are. Focus on the inward connection of your divine being. Close the chapter. What is a chapter that you want to leave behind? What are you wanting to close out? Think about that. That's going to be so vitally powerful and important to you. Okay. Um, leave it better than you found it. Leave things better than which you found them. That's going to be another important little message for you for 2024. And I also feel like taking out this deck before we end off this reading. So any other messages that spirit has for you for 2024? The warrior saint. I'm a warrior of love. My devotion attracts resources and support. So your devotion to your 
your mission, your purpose will attract more resources and support your way. You are a warrior of love if you take action from a place of love, from a place of compassion for yourself and for others. Okay, don't exclude yourself. Don't forget about yourself. So be a warrior of love and compassion towards you and others. And that devotion for that love will attract resources and support. You deserve to be paid for what you offer. You deserve to see your value, my love. I feel like that's gonna be a huge aspect of 2024 is seeing your value. I'm also seeing you um, starting to see more of your value when it comes to your love life as well and seeing what it is that you deserve. And I feel like there's gonna be a more yin-yang balance when it comes to your love life. This periwinkle scarf is sticking out to me so much right now. You might start getting drawn to that color in this next year, this periwinkle kind of color. And there's like a magical aspect of it. I feel like you are awakening more of your magic in this next year, being drawn more to the mystical, accepting more of the mystical, where I feel like maybe you've judged yourself for it in the past. Um, you're accepting more of your inner mystical, magical self, unlocking more of that in this next year. So what an amazing reading, group number one. That is what we have for you for your year of 2024. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I also just wanna mention if you are curious about getting any crystal jewelry, we have these amazing bracelets that we hand make. They're made with gold fill. I freaking love them. They're my absolute favorite. Um, all of the information for these hand beaded, amazing bracelets with authentic crystals, that will be all linked down below. And we also do sell actual crystals too. So if you want to get your hands on any of that, all of that info will be linked down below. Again, thank you so much for joining me here today for your 2024 year prediction. We're also going to be doing astrology. We're going to be doing your love life and career. So if you're curious about those things, this one was really focused on career already, but anyway, the more individual aspects of 2024 videos will be coming out as well. And thank you so much for joining me here. And until next time, bye. Oh my goodness. Okay, my group twos. This is going to be your 2024 year ahead. Let's dive into all the different things that you can expect in your 2024 year. All right, my group twos, we have the world card. We have our eight of swords, six of swords. I want to start with these ones right here because this is just so potent with energy. So it looks like in 2023, there's certain things that have happened or maybe a place that you're currently in that feels a little bit restricted. It's kind of like, I don't want to be here, but I don't see my way out. I don't see my way how to expand. But there's part of you that really, really is calling for more freedom and more independence. That is something that I feel like is one of your biggest manifestations and desires for the year of 2024. And something that I can tell you right now is that is absolutely coming for you because we have this fool and this king of wands over here. Over here, this is all talking about independence and freedom jumping into a whole new world, okay? The world card over here, there's different things that have accumulated to a particular point in your life now where I feel like you're so ready for something new. You don't wanna keep revolving around the same coin, doing the same things. I feel like you're so ready for a change and a shift. And again, you're really wanting to expand out. This six of swords indicates um, possibly a move. Some of you might want to make a big move in 2024 and go somewhere new, go somewhere different. There is a whole new vision on the horizon for you, except right now there's there's just certain things that you feel like stuck by. Um, maybe you're tied, you're tied down to something and you're like, I don't like being held back and restricted in this way. It almost feels like your freedom is a little bit like gone for whatever circumstances is happening right now. This year is a year where I feel like you are so like, Oh, there's just like this burning urge to set yourself free, to transition into something new. Um, a couple of different things that I'm hearing for, from this is there might be a big job transition for some of you. This could be within your career. It's like, oh, I'm going in a whole new direction now. And, or within your home life where you live, I think it might be a little bit of both. 
<laughs> okay? Because you see something, you have a whole different vision on the horizon. And I do feel like um, the energy that I'm getting for this is springtime. So come spring of 2024, you are going to be releasing yourself from this sort of restriction. So the springtime, again, starts in the end of March and goes till the kind of end of June. That is your window where I feel like you are going to be getting out of this sort of feeling over here. The Ten of Pentacles being reversed is, I feel like there's going to be a letting go of something. Like maybe, mm, maybe whatever it is that you're currently tied to that you feel kind of a little bit stuck to right now, maybe it does bring you a sense of reassurance, a sense of security, and a sense of like, there's some value you're getting there, but at the same time, it is restricting again your freedom and things like that. Um, within this transition, maybe we're letting go of a little bit of that, you know, that nice sense of security, that nice sense of like um, value that whatever this thing is that brought us, but you're setting yourself free. Some of you, this also could, this could be for some of you, the ending of a not so good relationship that maybe we were, maybe we were staying there because it did bring us some nice things, but at the same time, we know that it's not the right thing. It's not quite the right thing. Whatever this is, this could be, um, again, a partner, a friendship. I feel like it's deeper than a friendship, though. It's more, more, yeah, powerful. So again, career or your home life, or again, a combination of all of those things, to be honest, because usually tarot speaks so much in layers, and this is very layered. I also want to say that when it comes to the Eight of Swords, these are more mental restrictions than anything. It's more like different fears or different um, instances where we're kind of just scared to expand because we're scared of the, the consequences that we're coming up with in our head. And what I can tell you is that come springtime, I feel like you're going to be figuring things out to a point where you are ready to take that leap. You are ready to jump into this new thing and you're okay with leaving behind the value and security that you might have got from this, you're just ready to take that leap. You are ready to set yourself free. Oh, that's the word I'm hearing. Set yourself free. King of Wands, you're, you're taking your power back. Over here, this kind of feels like our power is being restricted a little bit. Over here, this is your freedom. This is taking your power back. This is stepping up to a much more significant, happy, passionate position of independence. Oh my gosh, the king of wants you so independent. And he is okay with a bit of spontaneity. So I do feel like this decision might come through a little bit of spontaneity for you where you're setting yourself free. And I do feel like you're going to be moving. <laughs> I keep getting that spirit keeps saying that there's some sort of transition where you're going to be in a different space and you're going to be away from whatever this restriction was. You're going away from it. Five of Swords over here indicates this fear of hurting other people in the process. There might be this fear of like, oh, I don't want to deal with the pain of that. I don't want to deal with the judgments of other people from that, their opinions. You might have someone who has a very strong opinion of what you should do and what you should do with your life. Or this could even be just scenarios you're making up kind of in your mind. I don't mean that to sound uh, like mean or anything. I mean that in the sense of like, you know, when we kind of like over contemplate things and we end up kind of creating these scenarios and we, we fear them so much and we're kind of just like, oh my God, I'm so scared. What if that does happen? And, you know, they're valid because maybe we're pulling from different experiences from our past. So it's kind of like we expect certain things to play out in a particular way. But at the same time, this year, I feel like you're going to value your own um, desires, your own passions so much more than fearing the minor consequences. Um, and I do feel like these are more minor consequences. I do feel like you're going to be figuring out your foundation. You're going to do this when you feel ready and when you know, like, this is just what I have to do. Setting yourself free, going on this new journey. There's a new journey ahead, opening up a whole new chapter here. And again, some people might have their own, like, opinions or you might have your own, like, little worries that might pop up, but I do feel like these are figure outable. They are figure outable. Okay. So that's coming through. Let's go ahead and dive into the next few cards for you. So 
my group twos. It's also interesting that you chose my amethyst. So the amethyst is connected to um, being able to let go of habits, patterns, restrictions. It's kind of like a detox. It helps us with detoxing and letting go, cutting ties with certain things that we feel bound to. Um, so it really helps with that. So if you ever want to quit habits, amethyst. If you ever want to um, cleanse, purify, amethyst. And amethyst is also a royal stone where it used to be at times in history worth more than diamonds at different times in history, which is crazy, right? But it was a stone worn by royals because purple is like a very uh, rare color in nature. And it is connected to the energies of making you see your worth and your value. So it helps with all those different things. If you feel like you need amethysts in your life, highly recommend these. These are like my favorite amethysts. They're such high quality and we do sell them on Luna Gem, but there's like limited quantities. So if you do want that, highly recommend. But anyway, aside from that, we also have the full moon in Leo. Don't let pride get in your way. Don't let pride get in your way. Full moon in Leo. Ooh. Ooh. Leo deals with our self-image, our heart. It's like caring so much, which I feel like you do have a really big heart. I feel like you do care when it comes to other people's opinions, other people's thoughts. Um, and the full moon in Leo, shedding. Shedding that, being able to shed that so that you can be free. Leo also really cares about its freedom. The lion cares about its freedom. This is your year to kind of step more into your own power, but at the same time, doing so in a balanced way where we're not just all like, you know, Leo is so connected to this King of Wands energy, but it's not arrogance. It's stepping into your confidence, but not arrogance. You know, we're not taking it too far over here. Um, another thing that I'm seeing is, an activation of your solar plexus chakra. So you're very connected to the sun energies, to Leo energies, to fire energies in this next year. You are connecting to those energies because those are being more awakened and becoming more powerful within you in 2024. And um, this is your time to step up into more of the spotlight, more of your confidence. Look at the sun behind the King of Wands. He's letting the sun help him shine. He's not dimming his light for anyone. He's being open and authentic and being like, okay, this is me. This is my true path. This is my true purpose. This is what I'm doing. I see this as unlocking more of your creativity, more of your confidence to move forward, taking a leap of faith. And ooh, if you have a creative endeavor that you work on, or maybe it's been, you know, maybe you're just a very creative person. You have creative things going on in your life. I feel like those are going to get amplified in this next year. And I also feel like it's because you're reigniting your flame. If you felt like you've had writer's block or a lack of inspiration, or if you feel like you've been stuck in a rut, oh, if you felt like you've been stuck in a rut, you are moving on to bigger and better. You have not like gotten to your biggest peak. You may have gotten to your biggest peak when it comes to where you're currently at, but this is a level or a chapter of your life where you're opening up and getting to a new level where you can now excel in that level. And there's a reinvigoration, re-inspiration. I think you're, you're taking your creativity and your passions to a whole other level. Taking a leap of faith. Spirit is calling you to have faith this year and to take that big leap, to believe in yourself, trust in yourself. Okay, the next card that we have, new moon in Gemini. Communication is key. Um, Gemini energies, you're gonna have a lot of ideas this year. I also think that there's a new significant friendship coming into your life, a very new significant friendship. And I do feel like this is likely going to be an air sign or a fire sign is what I'm feeling. Most likely air sign, getting air sign energy. Honestly, yeah, air sign. This might even be a Gemini. A Gemini. You're connecting deeper to a Gemini in your life. And they're going to help you with a lot of these ideas of helping you just set free. They also have a little bit of Leo energy in them, though. I'm feeling like this person, this Gemini, 
they take care of their appearance. Like the hair is just sticking out so much to me in this one and this one. And of course, Leos are all about that. I mean, that's why I'm feeling a little bit of Leo energy with this person. It's, um, this person is going to be a new friendship that I feel like is very inspiring to you. You're both inspiring each other. It's like you both kind of mirror each other a little bit. Um, and yeah, this friendship, this is going to be a very inspiring friendship to have. I think both of you are going to bounce ideas off of each other um, in a very fun way. Like your communication with this person is so fun and it's very well connected. I feel like this friendship is going to be very exciting. We also have the full moon eclipse. Conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse. The eclipses are a very potent and powerful energy. There is a chapter that you're closing out and it, it is this chapter that's kept you stuck. The world also talks about closing out a chapter. And what, what is this chapter connected to? All of these feelings of being restricted, stuck, lack of freedom, lack of independence, feeling like you're stuck in a rut creatively or even within your career, within your love life. If you felt stuck in a rut, that's ending. Conclusions are within reach. Like look at this whole year, 2024, setting yourself free. Springtime is going to be where you're jumping into this freedom and it's going to liberate you. It, you might get opinions from other people, but just know that their opinions take th things with a grain of salt. Okay. Um, your decisions, you might be scared that like, it's going to disappoint somebody. Uh, for you to like do this move, do this big transition, take this new leap. It might be disappointing somebody in the process, but at the same time, I feel like it's setting you both free because you're here to live your independent life, right? If you're not here to live your life for someone else, you're not here to make somebody else happy, right? And if we ever tie our purpose to that, to make other people happy, we're setting ourselves up for failure. <laughs> so, yeah, there's only so much we can do, right? But if you do things that are in alignment with your purpose and that ends up pleasing people in the process, you know, because we're providing value and all of that, that's good. But anyway, that's a whole other lesson. We also have the full moon card. We have so many cards talking about the ending of a chapter. Energy peak, harvest, blessings and achievement. We have full moon in Leo, full moon eclipse. We have the world card, which is the last card of the major arcana. It's the it's basically the same vibe as the full moon. 2024, your year of harvest, the hard work that you've put in, raking that in, full moon, it's coming to completion. Oh, some of you might be even completing a big project, completing a big um, idea, bringing an idea to life, okay? Blessings and achievement. If there's a big goal that you've set out for, King of Wands, the energy is there for you to make that happen. I see you doing that. I see you up-leveling, achieving something that you're like, oh, I'm proud of that. I'm so glad I took that leap because there's an achievement on the other side of that leap of faith, okay? We also have Taurus energy coming up for you. So Taurus might be a very prominent sign for you. You might even, even be Gemini, Taurus, since we have a lot of that energy coming up um, in this reading. Even if not, though, this reading is definitely still relevant. But you may have very significant Taurus, Gemini people in your life. Taurus energy is very connected to Venus. It is connected to abundance, prosperity, creating more um, aesthetic, creative, beautiful looking aesthetics and environments. So I feel like you also might be working on yourself and doing a little bit of a self transformation on a personal level. For you, you might be getting your hair done in a different way because hair has been a significant, um, thing coming up here. So that might be like, maybe you have totally different plans of like, I'm going to just like do a whole new me. Taurus is also our wardrobe, our clothes, our money, our savings, our environment. So things within that realm are going to be improving for you in this next year. We also have palace, Athene, inner wisdom, different things that you've wanted to know to help with your, your confidence. It's like doing that inner search, that inner work to find your own inner divine soul being, getting to know yourself on a whole new level. I feel like your inner soul is being activated in a new way. You're finding more of that inner wisdom. Pallas Athene is such a fun asteroid. It's very connected to divine feminine as well. 
So this could be activating more of that divine feminine energy, um, which is kind of knowing your worth, taking time off when you need it, letting the flow happen, getting into the energy of being in flow rather than feeling like you're stuck in a rut and having to force things. Maybe you're learning how to get back into flow. Um, and then we also have the waning gibbous. So this is when the moon is waning and it's um, going out of the full moon stage. So this is re releasing gratitude, nurture, and act of service. When we are letting go, we're letting go of, oh, let me not have to like force things so hard. Let me let go. And this is also coming back to the new moon where we can have a new beginning, letting go of that completion. And it's sort of like being able to relax, being able to take a breath of fresh air. There's a breath of fresh air. That is a main theme for you in this next year taking a breath of fresh air. We also have the nurturer. Ooh, bringing something to life. You have some interesting plans. And the world thing that's coming up again, we have the world card. She has a world within her. You're bringing a whole new world to life. I think you have a new vision of what you want your life to be like and a move. You might move to a different a different place, like a, a place that you've never lived before. Anyway, seed, conceive, nourish, birth. For some of you, this could be connected to children as well. So this could be talking about children and, and nurturing that aspect of you, the mothering aspect. On another note though, if that's like obviously not in the cards for you, the nurturer is bringing an idea to life, bringing a vision to life. What are you wanting to birth into the world in this next year? What are you wanting to create? I think that there's going to be something that you're creating this next year that you are extremely proud of, that you're really excited to be like, here's the new thing. Here's the new, like, like this is something you're excited to show people. Okay. Um, then we also have spirit, renew, detox, purify, cleanse, renew, detox, amethyst, very connected to amethyst, purify and cleanse, all connected to amethyst energy. What are you wanting to detox and purify from? I feel like there's different habits that you might have currently that you're like, okay, I don't want to carry that into the next year. I don't want to, yeah, like continue these habits that don't make me feel that good. What are those? I do feel like there's going to be a renew, a detox, and a cleanse when it comes to your health. I Ooh, health is coming up big here. In what ways are you nurturing yourself? In what ways could you nurture yourself better in this next year? I feel like your diet is changing, your digestion. If you've had issues with digestion, that's something you're going to be looking into improving. I also feel like some of you might be trying more natural ways of, of creating better health for you and detoxing things that aren't making you feel good. They are not making you feel good. What are those things? It's time to detox. Also amethyst, again, helps us detox. It is the energy of detoxing and releasing bad negative habits. We also have the dancer card. So shift, dance, and rapture in body. Um, I'm getting this feeling like there's been certain inhibitions that you've had that have held you back um, that have held you back and, and maybe you didn't want to come out into the light very much. The dancer reminds me of this fun energy. Ooh, Spirit wants to ask you, where has the fun gone in your life? What is it that you find fun? I think there's gonna be something new that you take up that's gonna be a lot more fun for you. There's a new hobby. Ooh, that came in strong. There is a new hobby that you're gonna get into in this next year. It is going to feed your soul this new hobby and you're going to get deep into it. Let me tell you, okay, group two, you're getting deep into this new hobby. It is exciting and it's going to come up in a, in a different way. I feel like this is something that you haven't quite explored much before. Maybe, maybe it's been a little bit or maybe it's an old hobby that we let go of a long time ago and haven't come back to it in a while. Or maybe it's something that maybe we've heard of before. Maybe we've tried it, but it's like, this is invigorating in you, this new hobby. We also have the lover's card coming up. Unite, desire, cherish, caress, caress. Um, when the lover's comes up, it can indicate that we are healing from old past relationships. It can also indicate that we are manifesting a relationship. If you're single, 
I'm seeing that there's an opportunity for love in 2024. Somebody that you're quite interested in. The lovers is a very powerful connection. It's not just like some fling. This is a powerful connection. I'm also feeling like for some of you, if you're already in a, in a relationship, this is a friend that feels so deeply close to you that you guys are, it's like a soulmate friendship. I feel like there's a soulmate friendship that is um, connecting so deep in 2024. Again, if you're single though, I'm also seeing a love a love opportunity coming in for you. And this is again, not just some fling, this is something that's much more significant and long lasting. Let's go ahead and see what else we get for you. My group twos, we have the thinking woman. You might be studying something new. This could indicate taking a class, um, even being self-taught in something, learning new skills, up-leveling your skill set. But it can also indicate schools, classes, courses, things like that. We also have the seventh chakra. Oh, your crown chakra. So awakening, higher level of purpose, higher level of understanding. So when it comes to old obstacles that you've been running into before, different challenges, different patterns in your life, habits. This is a renewal of your mental state, your spiritual connection, your faith in yourself and in the world. So that is also being activated here. Diving into another set of cards. Let's see, we also have the wildling. Ooh, there's gonna be some spontaneous decisions that you make and spontaneously cutting away certain things in your life ooh, that have been holding you down. And look at, we got the Ascension card next. What is, ooh, there is something that you're tied to that has been holding you back. Something that you're tied to. And once you cut it away, once you cut your tie to this thing, you're like free to go. You're free to ascend. You're free to get to the whole next level. Purple is going to be a very, um, it's interesting, crown chakra, which is related to purple, which is related to amethyst. We have so many cards relating to amethyst. It's no wonder why I felt like, I'm getting goosebumps right now. It's no wonder why I felt like putting amethyst on this group. That's so funny. Okay. Um, ascension, your spiritual understanding is getting to a whole new place. I also feel like you're cutting cords to things that, again, were holding you back, blocks that were holding you back, people that were holding you back. And it's kind of like these spontaneous decisions of like, no, I'm done with that. Like, that's no longer going to be uh, part of my story. We also have the observer. Um, mm, there's somebody that maybe you look up to and admire or like an inspiration that you have. You're like, oh, I strive to be that. I really want to up level. I want to ascend to that level. I see you doing that in this next year. I see you ascending to that place and maybe learning. Maybe there's somebody that you look up to that you are going to be inspired to, to up level your own skills to get to that level. I'm seeing that happening. Um, also, Observer is making me feel like uh, there might be somebody who really wants to reach out to you and connect to you. Somebody that really wants to reach out to you and connect to you. Oh! Spirit randomly just gave me another message. This is such a side note message. Who is it that you need to stop thinking about? This is such a side note message. Who is it that you need to stop thinking about? 2024. You're cutting ties with, you're, you're just like, no, I need to stop that habit. I need to stop thinking about this person. Stop looking them up. Stop wondering what they're doing. I need to stop it. I need to, I need to cut that tie. Someone's been taking up your thoughts who, they just need to be, like, they either need to be paying rent to be there or they, you just need to cut them, cut them loose. You know, don't even let them pay rent to be there because that's just, no, no. The, this is something where it's a bad habit. You know it is. <laughs> and we need to cut ties with it. Okay. Um, let's dive into some more cards here for you. My group twos. Oh my goodness. My group twos. Release yourself. That's also crown chakra, your attachments. What are you attached to right now that's been taking up a lot of your thought space, a lot of your mental space? Cut ties. You're going to be set free. Cut ties with anything that's holding you back right now. What is holding you back? I'm seeing you cut so many ties in 2024 to set yourself free. To ascend. Oh my gosh, there's so much ascend energy. Wow. You even have the highest 
chakra, seventh chakra, the highest chakra, you're, you are ascending this, <laughs> this year, going to new heights, new levels. Okay, what else do we have? We also have the sacred waters, nourishment, replenishment, health, rest, self-care. Your diet might be shifting or what you feed yourself. Um, you might be letting go of a certain habit when it comes to, for some reason spirit saying, drinking. Like if some of you, I don't know, do that a little bit too often, maybe you're just like, I just want to cut back on that. That could also be another aspect just to get yourself feeling better. Drinking more water is going to be huge. And make sure like, like, okay, I'm not a doctor. I can't be giving like health advice. But one thing that I learned recently, at least for myself, do your own research on this, but... Um, sometimes when I drink like so much water, I kind of feel like I deplete some of my electrolytes. And so now I've been like putting electrolytes in my water um, occasionally, not all the time. But, you know, when I drink a lot of water at once, I'm like, you know, what? I need to replenish my electrolytes. So I actually stay hydrated because sometimes I feel like if we drink too much water, we end up just kind of like flushing out <laughs> some of our electrolytes. But anyway, oh, there's like a fly flying around, just like almost landed on me. Okay. With that being said, let's dive into, we're gonna dive into some of these cards as well as our Astro Dice for you. And I'm also gonna restart my camera so that it doesn't cut out on us. All right, so these are little like spirit advice cards. We're gonna be asking about your 2024 year, if there's any advice spirit has for you for this year. Um, oh, oh my gosh. I feel like you needed this message right now. Look at this. The universe will never let you fail. Even at times that you've, that you've thought like, no, I failed or I didn't make it. That's not the case. This is all part of the divine purpose of where life is leading you. I'm sure we've all had these different situations in the past where, um, we, we thought we failed at something or we thought like, oh, that didn't work out. No. And we're like so down about it. But then later on, like a few years later, we look back and we're like, wait a minute. That was one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I feel like you're on this pivoting point right now. And the universe really wants to remind you of that group too, is you're going to be so thankful for all of these transitions. Um, and they will all make sense to you. Okay. Oh, oh, shadow work, my love. I actually recently just came out with a video on shadow work if you're curious about that, but this card is so connected to that. So take your darkest experiences and transmute them into light. So find the value behind any dark experiences that you've had. What is the value? There's always value if we're willing to see it, okay? Take care of your rarity. Oh, I love that this one came up. Take care of your rarity. Some of us, when we have uniquenesses, when we have rarities, we tend to be like, I don't know, uh, unconfident about them because it, it makes us unique and it makes us stand out. It makes us different. And sometimes when we feel like when we're different than somebody else, sometimes we feel like it's a bad thing. And then we tend to hide those things and we try to just fit in and we try to like be that cookie cutter mold. I don't know if any of you have like watched SpongeBob before, but... <laughs> I remember an episode when I was like pretty little watching this episode of SpongeBob where um, everyone wanted to be the same and perfectly polished. And you know, SpongeBob, he's a sponge, so he has a bunch of like holes and he's porous. And so in order to fit in, in order to be normal, in order to be normal, he got rid of all of his porousness and he became this like smooth, like soap bar looking thing just to fit in with like all the other smooth looking people. And then everyone was starting to kind of look the same and everyone was being the same and they'd all talk the same and interact the same because it's what was normal and it got so weird like imagine if imagine if you had those no weirdnesses you know those friendships that you have or like even within your family sometimes you might have this dynamic where you just are weird together you have these weird quirks you act in ways that you would never want to show the public these are all amazing things. And those are also the most fulfilling types of relationships, the ones that go that deep. So anyway, point being, you have your own uniquenesses, right? You have your own things that make you as an individual stand out. This is your year of allowing your individuality to shine because any anyone who's like successful, you know, has allowed their individuality to shine. 
they allow something unique about them to shine. The people who are successful are never quite like cookie cutter versions. You know, as long as you like, if you're actually looking at like, okay, what made this person stand out? What made this person successful? It's usually those little quirks of uniquenesses that make somebody stand out and become successful. So anyway, let your rarity shine. Take care of your rarity. Love your rarity because it makes you you and it can be one of your keys to your success. So let's go ahead and dive into our Astro Dice. We're also going to get the common zodiacs as well, but let's see what we have here. So we have Saturn in Scorpio in the 12th house. Wow, there is deep transformation happening mentally for you in this year. This is also connected to letting go of habits and letting go of old programming that kept us stuck, that kept us restricted. Saturn is the, that planet of restriction, boundaries, I also feel like you're getting more clear on what your boundaries are and how you need to uphold those boundaries. Maybe you tend to let other people kind of make the boundaries and then that's that, but maybe we haven't learned how to maybe fully communicate and figure out what our boundaries are or whatever, or we're needing to adjust what our boundaries are. So this also could be a, an aspect of that. But Saturn and Scorpio in the 12th house, this is figuring out your values, your boundaries, being able to reinforce those boundaries to keep you on track. So this might be boundaries that you need to create for yourself to keep you on track, creating new habits that are going to benefit you a lot, um, overcoming a feeling of stuck. That's a huge theme of this year for you, overcoming a feeling of being restricted and stuck, getting out of that shell, doing deep transformation. Um, your empath skills are also like highly increasing this year as well. So let's also dive into the common zodiac signs that are going, whoa, I just need to, I need to tell you this. There's a window right next to me and off the corner of my eye, I saw something almost fly into the window and it was this huge like dove looking bird. And I have not seen a bird that looks like that in the area that I live probably ever. That was wild. It literally almost flew into the window, but then went and ascended up and it, <laughs> it almost looked like this card, this like bird that just like almost flew into the window and then spread its wings right in front of the window and then just ascended up. It was wild. Okay. I'm, that is a rare, that's a rare experience. At first I wasn't going to say anything. And then I was like, you know what? I need to share that. That was actually wild. It gave me like, like a little bit of a shock to see that. Anyway, um, birds might be very significant for you. Feathers might be very significant for you this year. And it's all talking about ascension and following your freedom, becoming more free and all of that. So let's go ahead and take our Astro Dice. We're going to roll this three times to get the top three most likely Zodiac signs that will be in your life. Um, during this next year. So let's go ahead and see. We have Cancer. Cancer is going to be a significant one for you. And did we have the can? No, we had Taurus come up for you. Um, so Cancer Zodiac signs, those are going to be really prominent. Cancer also talks about our home life, our sense of safety and security and our foundation. So that energy is going to be significant. We also have Libra energy. So Libra is about finding balance. It's also about relationships. It's also about equality in love and how to, you know, find somebody who's on your same level and it's equal give and take in your love life. So I feel like you're transforming relationships this year. I feel like you're also bonding to a friendship who's going to feel so in alignment with you. Like this is a friendship unlike anything you've ever had before. The fact that we also had the lovers come in, I feel like you're also going to have a new like relationship if you're single. There's going to be a new relationship coming up for you that um, will be, again, unlike any other. It's much more just, it's balanced. It is the equal give and take. It is that mutual love, that mutual understanding. It's very balanced in that aspect. But again, Libra people will also be significant. This is people's zodiac signs, but I also like talking about the energies because usually once we magnetize particular zodiac signs in our life, we're also magnetizing the energy of that zodiac sign as well. So that's why I go into the energies and also the the zodiac sign. We also have Aquarius. So Aquarius is going to be very common and significant for you as well. Aquarius energy is getting into your rarity, allowing your uniquenesses to shine. It can also talk about social media, 
technology, so technology upgrades, um, and getting out of your shell, making new friendships, meeting new people, especially like online, through social media, through our work, um, and other through other mutual friends. It's kind of like these series of interesting, unexpected things that lead us to new places. So that energy is going to be significant for you as well. So um, those are our zodiac signs, cancer people, um, Aquarius people. And then what was the other one that we just had? We also had, what did we have for you? I almost don't remember, Libra. Libra energy is going to be significant as well and Libra people. So those are all of the different signs and everything and happenings that are going to be occurring in your year of 2024. Thank you so much for joining me here, my beautiful group number twos. I also just want to mention that if you are curious in getting any crystal jewelry, I have tons of handmade crystal bracelets that are made with gold fill. We make them to your wrist size as well. They're so customizable and they're made with authentic crystal. So if you want to wear crystal energy, we have all that going on. We also have actual crystals. So if you are curious about any of that, I'll have all of that linked down below. They're so potent. I am absolutely obsessed with our bracelets. I actually, I might be biased, but I think that they're the best things in the world. So I love talking about them, but thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are curious about your other aspects of 2024, we're also going to be making a love life prediction, a career prediction, the astrology and all of that. So stay tuned for that. And I'm sending you so much love and until next time. Bye. All right, my group number threes, if you chose this pile, this is going to reveal all the different events that you can expect in 2024. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, my group threes, oh my goodness, we have a lot of cup cards going on for you. We have the four of cups being reversed, three of cups reversed, the temperance upright over here, five of cups upright, uh, queen of wands being reversed, and then the ace of cups being reversed here. So this is like a, a year, of, immediately when I looked at this group, I feel like this is a year where you're gonna begin romanticizing your life, where you wanna create more feelings of beauty, more feelings of comfort, serenity, being surrounded by like art and beauty and being surrounded by the things that you love and the things that make you feel good. You might be really called to start a journaling practice, which, oh my goodness, I feel like for you is going to be so healing. Maybe you already do that, but you're going to be diving into it even more this year. And I feel like it's going to be an incredibly healing time for you to, you know, dive into journaling. And if you're new to that, there are some amazing videos online. If you Google how to start journaling, how to start a journal, a spirit just keeps saying that for you in this group. Maybe that's something you've been thinking about. Maybe again, that's been whatever, but, um, yeah, I keep getting that in this group. This is a year of shedding. There's different things in your life that I feel like you are ready to let go of, that you're ready to shed, especially things that you've been focused on that haven't been valuable for you to focus on. There's different focuses that you've had that's like, why are we even putting our time and energy towards those things? Because they have not been going anywhere. They have not been paying off. So what are those things that haven't been going anywhere that we've been putting a lot of time and attention to? I feel like this might be relationship oriented for some of you, most of you. I feel like this is relationship oriented. Who do we keep giving so much time and attention to and being at their beck and call when they're not returning that? This is a year of turning that around. Temperance is finding balance in your relationships, balancing out your dynamics with relationships, how much give and take that there is, cutting off people from your life who don't value you, that's gonna be a major part or aspect. It's something that you're probably even thinking about right now is like, who do I really wanna be surrounded by? Who do I wanna call into my life? And ending old patterns when it comes to the people in your life, the relationships that you have. Oh my goodness, with this Ace of Cups being reversed here, there's different things in your life where you might feel drained or empty and you are flipping the dynamic this year of where you focus your energy. You, this is a year of rest, rejuvenation, revitalizing yourself, self-care, self-love, putting yourself first. Oh my goodness, there's huge lessons here about that, that you've just went through, not that you're <laughs> about to go through, that you've just went through about learning how to put yourself first. That is such a big theme for you. Put yourself first. 
right? Because how can we give from an empty cup? You know, how can you put yourself first to where you can, you can find your fulfillment and then, you know, everything else from there on out follows suit and everything from, from then on out is balanced. So your year of 2024, cutting out the things that are just stealing your energy, draining you, focusing on implementing more things that bring you joy, that bring you fulfillment, rejuvenation, which is why I think you're going to get into romanticizing your life and you're getting into journaling. Like, I think you're going to be up-leveling your life and kind of having this like inner glow up and it's going to be transforming your mental states, your emotional states, your, um, your whole inner world, like how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be shifting so massively. I think you may also go through this deep spiritual awakening. You probably have already had one in the past, possibly, but I feel like there's another one right now that's just kind of like accumulating, but this is like a very positive spiritual awakening of, of like, you know what? I want to put myself first and who am I and what do I really want and what do I want to attract into my life and, and how do I start really like cultivating that energy? This is a cultivation year for you. The four of cups being reversed, by the way, is one of my favorite cards to show up in the reverse position because this card is when it's upright, she's focused on all of these cups in front of her that like didn't work out, that are kind of stealing her energy. They're draining to think about. But when it's reversed, this is when she turns around and takes the opportunity, this cup that's like coming down from the heavens, right? And she finally grabs hold of that. That's what she's finally grabbing hold of. So your year of 2024 is grabbing hold of a new paradigm. Like I feel like there's a paradigm shift. Temperance also talks about a paradigm shift and the blending of different things. So, um, blending in something new. I feel like you're going to have new interests, new callings. You are mixing in things in your life that are just going to catapult you upwards, catapult you towards more fulfillment. And I really think a big aspect of it comes from leaving things behind. There's a, there's a significance around the number three for you here. If threes have been showing up for you a lot, that's really significant. We have three cups here that are overturned. The three of cups, which is three cups being overturned. The five of cups shows three cups overturned. What are those things? They could be people that we need to kind of just keep our distance from. They could be other distractions, maybe other things from our past that we just need to de detach from. Um, oh, if you've been more focused on the things that didn't work out, the hurts of the past, the the things that didn't go the way that you wanted them to, if you've been more focused on that than the opportunities that you have ahead of you, this is your year of shifting that focus. Your focus is shifting. This temperance, she is shifting her focus. Reinvigorating your light. When Queen of Wands, she's in a reinvigoration stage. <laughs> she's reigniting her fire. That is you. It might've got burnt out a little bit. Maybe we felt burnt out. This is your year of re reinvigoration. Okay. Let's dive into our next few cards here. So the next one we have a fiery climax approaches full moon in Aries. There's something that's finishing. There's a climax that's, that's bringing you to the finish line of something here. Um, I feel like putting this one over here actually. So yeah, the finishing line and also the Ram Aries, the Ram, they are ready. Like this is spontaneous. This is a spontaneous decision of like, Nope, no more. I am done with this. I am ending that there's a fiery climax happening here where you're no longer going to be focused on these other things. And it's kind of like, you know, what? I'm done holding that, um, energy. We also have hold your vision, the fixed moon hold your vision. There is something that you're really desiring and maybe you haven't seen a lot of progress with that. Hold that vision because I think 2024 has a lot of promise for you when it comes to bringing that vision and changing your paradigm. There's a paradigm shift. Um, if you've been thinking like, oh, every year's the same. I, I make this intention. Doesn't transpire. Doesn't happen. Doesn't turn out. Hold that vision. I feel like 2024, there's a big paradigm shift, a lot of big realizations and look at, you have to shift your energy instead of being focused here 
We have to be focused ahead. We have to be focused on the future. Stop focusing on the past. There's a huge message here. Stop focusing on the past. Stop worrying about the past. Stop, um, uh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Projecting your past experiences into your future. And what I mean by that, okay, this is getting kind of intense. I'm sorry. I apologize. But, um, what I mean by that is sometimes if we have different disappointments, like let's say we've had a lot of disappointments with relationships before. And then whenever we go on a new date, it's like we're excited, but there's a lot of fears because we're like, oh, I'm probably just going to get hurt again. Like, and we're just expecting the worst almost because we're projecting our past onto our future. And maybe you're wondering like, how do I stop that? Isn't that natural? Like, yes, totally natural. I totally get you. I have been there. Um, however, when we can start to focus and hold the vision, hold the intention of what we really want, not from a place of lack, not from a place of focusing on all the things that didn't work out, but from focusing on what do I really want? Let me hold that energy of what I really want. Let me hold my focus. And anytime my, my mind wanders to the past or wanders towards failure, or wanders towards those negative things, let me flip it. Look at her temperance, getting control of your focus, your emotions, your intentions, and she's flipping it. This is like this flip energy. So instead of focusing on the past, let's, whoosh, nope. I think your mindset is shifting and you're so ready for a mindset shift. And I think it's gonna be so beneficial in what it is that you're attracting in your life. So holding your vision for 2024. And we also have, ah, <laughs> look at this one. We have waxing crescent moon. Have faith in your dreams, my love. Have faith in your dreams. Could we not get a more clear message coming through right now? I don't even know. <laughs> Have faith in your dreams. 2024 is a very promising year for you when it comes to your dreams. We also have adjustments are required. Third quarter moon. This is your year of doing those adjustments, of making those changes. There's decisions that you're going to have to make, and I feel like it deals with letting go of the past, moving forward focusing on your future. There might be different people that you have to let go of or distance yourself from or different happenings with those people that we need to let go of in order for us to move forward and move on. Okay, um, let's get into these cards that we have here. We have the um, sixth house, Virgo. This is a house of healing. It's also a house of productivity. I do. <gasps> Why did I just hear marriage in the I do aspect of this card? Maybe some of you really want to manifest that or manifest like positivity in your relationships. The sixth house doesn't really have anything to do with marriage. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. But when I just read I do, spirit was just gave me this vision of wedding um, and like soulmate connection. Okay, but even though the sixth house is more about healing, it deals with our body, our vitality, our health, our energy. It deals with our career, being productive, getting organized, getting things all together. Like it's very connected to, again, Virgo and Mercury. It's the Virgo Mercury house. And I think that this is you getting things together, going through healing, taking care of yourself. Um, maybe this is also going to be a big self-care and self-love year for you. And I'm also hearing again, romanticizing your life, cultivating more romance in your life. Maybe that's an intention that you have for this year is cultivating more romance. Let me tell you right now, I absolutely see more romance coming into your life in 2024. Maybe you've been wanting to invigorate that spark, call that in. And my love, I see it for you. We also have Juno. Oh my goodness. Group threes. Oh, you, oh my freaking gosh. This has been happening in every group so far, which I'm so, I, I'm amazed by it because I never look at the cards before placing the crystals on them, before doing the readings. I don't know what these cards are. We choose them blindly and then dive into it. And we have the green fluorite crystal on your group, which is all about the heart chakra, heart chakra healing, letting go of the past, healing grief, healing guilt, healing um, uh, like heart chakra pain or hurt or uh, other things to deal with. Again, the heart chakra, it also helps us heal jealousy and drama. Uh, it helps us get the attention that we need as well. 
We also do sell these on the shop. If you do want these crystals, they help with those energies. So again, I'll have all that information linked down below. I just, I literally am mind blown because sometimes, you know, the crystal will be connected to the group, like for like a couple of the groups, but it's been happening in every group so far. So I love it. Anyway, besides that, Juno is the sacred union asteroid. And so ugh, the fact that we even have that coming up for a lot of you, I feel like maybe there's been something in your relationships where you're wanting to level up your relationships. You're wanting to take your relationship and your love life to the next level. Maybe you're wanting healing to occur in your love life. Maybe you're wanting to attract your soulmate. Um, maybe you're wanting to create a deeper bond with your soulmate or reinvigorate the romance, create more connection there, more emotion, more deepness. Um, and yeah, you have all the cards indicating that that is the focus of this year. For those of you that are single, because I feel like most of you who chose this pile, you're probably single or in a situationship. And what I'm seeing is leaving behind the things that are not providing you what you actually want. Leaving behind. What is the thing that, that's failing? It's a pattern that keeps failing. It is leaving that behind and moving towards something that's going to be actually to totally fulfilling, moving into the future, letting go of all those things, cutting ties with them, bringing your focus back to the future, doing deep healing and deep letting go, which is going to bring you to more romance in your life. It's going to bring you to marriage and I do. It's going to bring you to your sacred union, my love. That is coming in so strong. If you're already in a relationship, what I'm seeing is like this reinvigoration, deeper understanding between you both, possibly even marriage. <laughs> if that's something that you don't have yet, if you're not married, yet. What I'm seeing is like deep marriage, deep understanding here and um, finding that person that you want to say I do with. Like that is coming in so powerfully in this reading. And I feel like there is a little bit of work to do before we get there. There's a lot of like letting go of the past, not projecting the past into the future. If we tend to bring in our pains, our worries, our scarcity, our fear, our lack into the future, we're going to keep, we're going to keep copy and pasting our future our, our um, past into our future. We're going to keep copying and pasting it. However, if you want to end that cycle, we need to cut the ties with those old things. We need to let that go. We need to maybe cut ties with people that are taking up space and not allowing us to find the right person. You know, whatever it is that you need to do, you're going to know for you. Again, it's a general reading. So see how this is applying to you. And I feel like you're going to know intuitively. I feel like there's going to be some intuitive things through what this reading is saying right now that, 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 you know, deep down inside, you're like, okay, I see it. I know what I need to do. <laughs> I get it. Um, and it's going to be revealed more over time. So even if you don't see the whole picture yet, this is going to get revealed through the rest of the year, um, helping you create and cultivate more romance, helping you create and cultivate and attract and magnetize this I do in this sacred soulmate kind of union. We also have Aquarius energy coming through. Aquarius energy could be the significant like um, energies and signs of the person that you're meant to be with. Like they might have this like Aquarius, like different kind of energy about them. They might actually be specifically an Aquarius or they just hold the, uh, the energies of an Aquarius or this could even be a, a significant sign for you in some way. But I feel like this is stepping outside of your comfort zone. This is going to happen in an unexpected way. Okay. Unexpected. This could also indicate online meeting because Aquarius is connected to technology. It's connected to online stuff. Also, I feel like the way that this card is laying out in the light right now, it's hard to see. So I'll hold this one up, but, um, this can happen through unexpected means, possibly mutual friends, but I'm feeling this is more online for a lot of you and meeting in just unexpected circumstances, meeting this person. If you, again, if you're already in a relationship, Aquarius is going to be an energy signifying how things are going to change for you, taking a new approach, unexpected shifts happening that bring us closer to the vision that we have. I really think that <clears throat> a big message coming up for you is balancing your give and take. If we over give, we close off our ability to receive because we're giving too much, vice versa. So if you're wanting to receive more, make room to receive. Stop chasing. Stop overgiving. If you constantly overgive, you are not leaving any room to receive. Nobody's going to want to do that. Of course, people are just going to sit back and be like, oh, I'll just receive more and more and more and more and more. If you want to receive, 
you have to make room in your life to receive, take a step back, stop over giving, maybe even cut yourself off from the people who haven't been giving to you. Take a step back, stop doing the pattern, different approach. Aquarius says different approach, okay? So diving into the next card that we have, we also have the circle happening. So collaborate, assemble, hold, initiate. I think that your circle of people that you hang around the most is also going to be shifting and changing. And you're like assembling a new tribe, a new soul tribe. I think that you might meet new people this year that you really resonate with. And you might also notice that you don't resonate as much with certain people from your past anymore. I think your inner circle is changing. And I'm also seeing that there's there's travel for you and you might travel somewhere where you meet new significant people that you're like, wait a second, I really connect with this person. This is like so cool. And I feel like there's gonna be big transformations with the new um, friendships and people that you meet in your life through this next year. We also have Shapeshifter. I feel like you are changing so much to the point where people are gonna almost, um, they're gonna come up to you and be like, like, wow, you've changed. You might even get that. You might even have people that have known you for a long time. They're like, oh my gosh, you've really changed. Like you are like a whole different person, but this is a very good thing because this is helping you end this old paradigm of where we felt drained, where we felt a lack. We felt a, a lack of receiving. We weren't receiving. I feel like you've been over giving and not receiving this year that's changing and everyone's like there's people that are gonna be like oh my god you've like literally changed and you're like i know but this is a good thing but it's also going to change maybe like a bit of your inner circle and all of that as well we also do have the artist card coming up for you i think you're painting a new picture of your life some of you might be really into art you might be into all these artsy things but i do feel like you're going to be surrounded by more art more romance more things that evoke all of these incredibly good like feelings incredibly good emotions in you i feel like this card is talking about your emotional well-being and just feeling this growth this sprouting being surrounded by like really good things because i think you're going to be more focused on your emotional well-being and crafting your life to evoke more of those good feelings. Again, I'm hearing journaling. Journaling's huge for you. Um, you might get called to doing more art or this might even, there's gonna be like inspiration through this year that might tie into something that you end up creating um, this year. It might evoke more like, oh, I have this new idea, I have this new interest, I have this new thing and I'm so excited to see it come to life. So this could be directly again correlated to doing art, doing something creative or just enhancing your life in creative ways, creating more romance for you. So let's dive into some more stuff here, let's see. We also have the child within, inner mother, innocence, greatness, tenderness. There's some healing from your childhood that's coming in, like inner child healing, things that you weren't given as a child, things that you maybe weren't taught as a child that you're now learning and you're, you're nurturing yourself healing that that inner wound maybe that you've had for from your childhood i feel like you might even go on a retreat that might heal this for you i'm really kind of feeling that for you there might be a retreat or i don't know maybe even just like a workshop that you join that is like helping heal that or this could be something that you're just doing on your own as well but this circle and um child within card almost makes me feel like there's like an inner circle that you're working with or like a workshop that you're joining or something like this. So let's get another card here. Ooh, that one really wanted to jump out. Okay. I am speechless right now. I am speechless. We just had the child within, inner mother, innocence, gentleness, tenderness. The next card that just came out healing the mother line, healing ancestral work, mother line growing up. Wow, that is significant. I'm getting goosebumps. Ancestral healing. So in what ways were you brought up in, in, in certain ways that have contributed to the different patterns that you have in your life right now of overgiving, being too forgiving, not putting up certain boundaries, not cutting away things that are not good for you. Maybe there's some dynamic 
with you and your mother that will be healing this year, healing this dynamic. Maybe there's a lot of pressure that you feel from your mother to be a certain way, to do certain things. Maybe you, maybe she's projecting her wounds onto you that makes you have this insecurity and this fear. But again, it's, it's our responsibility to heal those things, right? Even if we've picked up on them from other people, it's our responsibility to heal that. Um, but this is a big significant thing for you in 2024 is going to be healing this. Okay. Let's see what else we get for you. A bunch of cards flying out now. So let's see. We also have our fate card. This also indicates the birth of something new. And it also indicates something like we're meant to go through this. This was like meant to happen to rebirth you, to heal. I'm also getting childhood from this card as well. The universe, getting in control of your universe and your life. Feeling like you're back in control of it. Soul work, that's coming up big time. We already feel like we know the connection of that. So some soul work. You might even be a bit of a busy bee in um, 2024. There could be a lot of things going on. But I also feel like you're very dedicated this year to creating a paradigm shift. You're very dedicated to that. And then we also have paradox. Paradox is making me feel like you're actually going to be laughing about certain things within this that might right now you might be like, no, I don't even see how I could like find this like laughable, but I feel like you're going to be overcoming things and healing things on such a deep level that you're able to almost laugh about these things later on. You're, you're like, I feel like you're almost going to have this really gentle heart with yourself, with your experiences. And I think things are going to be really shifting for you. I think that there's things going on behind the scenes that you don't even see right now that are helping you lead to this big transformation that you're going to be making. I'm also seeing some big travel for you as well. Um, possibly just like a really significant trip on the horizon for you. So let's dive into another deck here. We've got some more information. So what else for my group threes for 2024? Magician and the mirror. This is the powerful card of manifestation, my love powerful card of manifestation. What is your vision? This is the card of bringing it to life, doing magic, like feeling like magic is happening in your life, blossoming abundance. This one can also talk about career. So there could be, this could be a really thriving year for you in terms of your career, feeling like you're blossoming, blooming. There's different things happening for you. Um, blossoming abundance when it comes to your love life. The, I feel like you're going to be, um, by the end of next year, you're going to be in a totally different place in your life. A completely different place. And it is going to be beautiful. Okay, I'm also going to restart my camera so it doesn't cut out. I'll be right back. All right, so getting into the last little bit of your reading, we're going to pull some oracle cards. We're also going to get into some astro dice. These ones are like advice from the universe cards. So let's see what you get for your year of 2024. My group threes. Spirits, advice, the universe's advice for you. We have a lot of cards coming out. Okay, let's start with... Okay, let's dive in. Trust is a muscle. Ooh, look at this one. Okay, trust is a muscle. Allow yourself to let go and to know that what is meant for you is coming. What do you need to let go of to set yourself free, to open up the space and the door for what it is that you really want? Oh, that one's powerful. That one ties in so much with your reading. Can't even believe it. Okay. We also have things are always changing, shifting and evolving. What is true today may not be true tomorrow. Okay. If you're wanting to let go of a particular habit, a particular feeling, thoughts, fears, things are always changing. I feel like you're going to be getting over things um, and like ending some of those old paradigms in this next year and those same old fears and problems are not going to be following you around. Okay. We also have this card, not choosing is still choosing. That is so powerful. I feel like this has to deal with letting go of things that you know are not working out that are not the right thing for you. And you're like, oh, I don't want to make the choice. I don't want to make the choice. I don't want to have to like cut it out because then what if I regret that choice or what, blah, 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 blah. Not choosing is still choosing. You are still choosing. You have to make 
a, a, a real choice, one that's going to serve you in, in the long term. Oh, this one, I love that this one came up right after. Right after our choice card, this is the next one. This is so powerful. Whatever you decide, it will be the right decision. I mean, there's your confirmation right there, my love, okay? We also have, the more you focus on the present moment, the more you align with your inner peace. Focus on the present moment, not the past. And that's the more that you're gonna align to your inner peace. And then look at this one. We have a, these cards are just playing off back to back. This is like a whole story that Spirit is saying right now. No wonder so many came out for you. This is wild. Okay, so how can you live in peace? I should have been blank. What should have you been by now at this time? How about focus on the present moment? More, the more that you align with your inner peace, the more that you're going to align with what you're, who you're meant to be. The universe works with divine, divine timing, my love, okay? So diving in now to these right here, we're going to roll this dice to get the top three most likely zodiac signs to be in your life during 2024. So let's go ahead and see what is the most common. We have Pisces. Pisces is a very common one for you. Pisces energy, I also like talking about the energies because anytime that we are magnetizing specific zodiac sign people into our life, we also are magnetizing the energies, which is why we end up magnetizing those particular people because it's the same energy. So Pisces energy is very creative. It's very deep. It makes our dreams very significant. So you might start dreaming of like really significant things in your life. And most dreams speak in symbolism. Um, it also is our unlocking more creativity as well. Let's see, we also have Taurus, Taurus energy. So up-leveling your surroundings. It's also about romance as well. Taurus is very romancy and connected to the more material aspects of romance. So lighting candles, having comforts, having beautiful surroundings that evoke feelings of romance, art, things like this. So this is a significant aspect of your year as well. Also Taurian people. And Gemini, Gemini is another one. So Gemini is about learning, communicating, friendships, the people that are in your life, um, that type of energy. And then of course, also the zodiac sign, people of Gemini. So let's go ahead and roll all these together and get any last info for you. So we have the south node, Gemini. So somebody from your past that's a Gemini, fourth house. Okay. You might even be a Gemini yourself too. So this is talking about your past again. What are you wanting to set the foundation for? Are we wanting to set the, our foundation to be this, the same as the past? Because if so, we might as well copy and paste our past into the future. Make the same decisions, make the same choices. If we don't want to do that, we need to make new choices and do something different. So looking into your past, realizing <clears throat> where we've had patterns, where we've been making the same choices, Gemini's also choices, being guided in two different directions. If we make the same choices, we're going to lay the same foundation. We're going to reinforce the same thing to occur and to keep building into our future. So think about what do you want to stop building and what do you want to, what do you want to now build? I feel like this is calling you to move into a new direction when it comes to your future. Okay, my love. So to end us off here, I also feel like some of you, there could be a significant visit back home for you, maybe where you grew up, maybe to your family, maybe talking about the past with your family in order to find healing there. This is also an aspect of this. Communicating about it in order to find healing, to find closure. There might be even a significant thing in your past that you need closure on. This is a year for getting that. And then making a new choice. We have to change our patterns and our choices if we want our future to be different than it has been. If you don't want the same year as last year, if you don't want the same outcomes, you have to make a new choice, my love, okay? So that's like the last little bit of advice that Spirit wants to leave you on for this next year, but it looks like there are going to be new choices. It looks like you are shifting that paradigm, calling in more romance, doing a lot of healing, especially on the mother side of your family. And wow, hold your vision, my love. Sacred union coming in for you. We have so much to do with I do, sacred union, connection, calling in really significant um, 
people into your life. So that is what we have here. Thank you so much for joining me here for this video. I am sending you so much love. I also want to say that if you are wanting to get any crystals, we have these on the site. We also have crystal jewelry that we make these, um, hand beaded bracelets according to your wrist size so they fit you perfectly they're also made with gold fill so that you can wear them in water and they won't tarnish they're amazing i love talking about them because they're so amazing all the information for that will be linked down below if you are curious about your specific love life in 2024 there's also going to be a video on that there's also going to be a video on your 2024 year ahead in your career and there's also going to be the astrology for 2024 for your zodiac sign. All of those videos are coming out. So if you want to see those, stay tuned. Or depending on when you're watching this, those might already be out. But sending you all so much love. Thank you so much for joining me here. And then I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, my group number four is if you chose this pile, this is going to reveal your year of 2024 and what you can expect. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, my group four is six of cups, the lovers. We have the six of wands. This is so significant. It is successful. There is some sort of achievement that you are making or some sort of recognition in your life that you are getting to. This is also sticking out to me because it's right next to the lovers, which can talk about relationships. So this could talk about your relationship, like a very successful new step in your love life, a very successful like, oh, there's a commitment, ah. This can also talk about a ring because she's holding the wreath there. So this could also talk about like um, getting engaged, getting to the next level, making a really big purchase, moving in together, buying a house. This can also talk about weddings um, and getting recognition and success there. However, it can also talk about business as well. So we're also going to be talking about that. So if you um, are working, you have a career going on, this can talk about networking, meeting the right people who help you take things to the next level. This could also be getting recognized by the public because the lovers could also talk about the public eye and the perception of other people. And mm, if you have a business of some kind, getting more clients, getting more exposure, people talking about you. There also could be a significant person who shares your work, shares your stuff, and it just gets more exposure, more, um, clientele, more people coming your way, getting attracted to what it is that you do. So that is very exciting. I also see this being a very productive year for you with lots of things to do, but it, like this card being upright, this is something that we want to work on. This is things that we're excited to put our effort and our time into. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff going on here for your year. And there could also be somebody from your past that you're reconnecting with as well. This could be somebody that you've gone to school with before. That's going to be reconnecting with you. You're crossing paths with this person again. This could be somebody from your past that maybe recognizes the work that you're putting out and is like, wait a second, like, this is amazing. And like, let's reconnect. And maybe both of you are going to collab on something or, uh, do something here, but there is something significant from your past happening, somebody from your past that you might be reconnecting with here in this next year. Um, but there's also some unknown opportunities that I'm seeing for you as well. So when it comes to your career, when it comes to the things that you do, the work that you do, there is a little bit of stepping into the unknown here, taking on a new project where it's like, whoa, that's like bigger than I've ever done before. This is like the whole next level. I'm also seeing a promotion, by the way. So if you if you work for a company, I'm seeing some kind of promotion and given bigger, better tasks that you're paid more for as well. Um, and if you own your own business or anything like that, I am seeing that there's going to be more recognition, more work, taking on bigger projects that it's like, whoa, this is like a whole nother level of like things right here. And it's helping you excel and make more money. I am also seeing you bringing something into the world, bringing something to life. Maybe you have a vision of something that you want to create in this next year, something that you want to manifest, but it's about meeting the right people. We have multiple cards here that talk about networking and meeting the right people. So when it comes to your work, when it comes to things that you want to do, that you want to manifest in your life, some of those might require meeting the right people, meeting the right person. This is also happening in 2024, but I feel like this is going to happen more at the later half of 2024 when this starts making a lot of progress, this particular vision where you need help from another person. I feel like this is going to start happening. It, it might start accumulating around March, 
But I think the full fruition of this sort of vision coming to life and things coming together, getting to see the more final products, the final vision of whatever this is, um, is going to happen more around September and beyond of next year. So I'm seeing a lot of those things happening around that time. This more love connection when we're talking about your relationship, your love life going to the next level, I feel like this is happening spring and summer. Spring and summer, your relationship's like going to the next level. Something new is happening here in your love life where things are being recognized more. Maybe we're taking the next step with someone. Um, maybe we're meeting somebody. So if you're single, this can talk about possibly meeting somebody that's like, oh yeah, I'm I want to commit to that person. This sounds exciting. This sounds good. So that could also be happening here as well. The moon card indicates that there's quite a lot of things here happening um, that are going to require you to step outside of your comfort zone. Anytime that we do any form of expansion at all, we're always going to have to step outside of our comfort zone. We're stepping into the unknown. So there's things that you're going to be doing this year within your career and within your love life where it's stepping into a whole new world for you. We might have to face some fears um, along that path because we might fear like, okay, am I worthy of this? Do I have what it takes? Is it going to come out the way I want it? Is it, is it going to match the vision that I have? What's it going to be like, you know? And there can be a little bit of fears when walking into the unknown, but I feel like it's all going to turn out very well for you. I feel like you're going to be meeting the people that you need to, making those proper connections. And I'm also seeing this as up-leveling your finances. The three of pentacles, this is up-leveling, up-leveling getting things done, being able to up-level your financial world. I feel like finances are getting better for a lot of people, okay? Like, a lot of people have been talking about how the economy is uh, not that great right now in the world, especially with everything that's happened. And in pretty much every reading so far, I think that there's been a lot of significant cards pointing to more financial success for a lot of people. Um, so I would not be surprised if things start happening for us where we're finding better opportunities. We are improving in the monetary aspects of our personal lives and in the world. So I'm definitely seeing that happening. The hangman makes me feel like there might be certain delays when it comes to bringing this vision to life. Maybe we're having to wait for meeting the right person or finding the right person to help us with bringing this career thing to life or getting this opportunity going. There might be a little bit of waiting for that. Maybe you've been waiting around for a promotion or some sort of up-leveling in your career. Maybe you're waiting to see the um, results of the work that you've been putting in. Both of these cards are talking about putting in a lot of work. The hangman indicates that maybe we haven't quite seen the progress of that yet. However, 2024 is a year where you're going to be seeing that progress. There is going to be a some sort of significant recognition that you get. Okay, um, some sort of significant recognition. Keep that momentum going. One of the um, advices from spirit coming through is focus on how can you keep that momentum going, that success, keep going, and you can take it to higher levels. You can take it to bigger places, but continue that and um, everything will be prosperous for you. Let's dive into the next few cards that we have. So my group fours, yes, we're on group four. Okay. Your commitment is being tested first quarter moon. Maybe there's something where you haven't seen a lot of progress yet on it. Okay. This is coming more clear to me. You've been working really hard, possibly without seeing tons of results yet. And maybe you've been wondering, do I just give up on this? Do I stop doing this? Do I stop working so hard? What do I do? Like maybe that's been a big question. Your commitment is being tested. Are you committed to this vision? Overnight success is very rare. Doing things um, like, you know, overnight success, like I don't even, I'm not even a believer in overnight success because I, I believe that we need to cultivate certain skills and things come in divine timing when we're manifesting something. So this is coming in divine timing. If you believe in your vision, if you want this to be your reality, whatever this thing is that you're working towards, we have to stay committed to it. The hangman is like, okay, do I get off of this branch? Is things Are things gonna happen? Change your perspective. I think um, this is about, is it worth it to you to see this to fruition? Because I am seeing success for you, but 
we do have to keep working towards it. The answers you need are coming full moon in Gemini. Wow, if that wasn't reassurance enough, the answers you need are coming. So whatever it is that you still need in order to kind of have your breakthrough moment to kind of get to this success that we're seeing right here. The answers that you need are coming. The ideas, that wisdom is going to be coming through for you. I think very soon, I think, okay, what I'm hearing is that these answers are coming through um, January through April. There's going to be a lot of new inspirations to help guide you in that right direction. You might feel like you're navigating the unknown right now, <laughs> working really hard, but things are coming to fruition here. The answers that you need are coming. Gemini also talks about uh, studying, reading, learning, communicating, networking. So I think a lot of these answers are going to come through those means of learning, um, networking, communicating, reading, and all of that. We also have balance spirituality with practicality. So we do need to take action as well whenever we're manifesting something. It's not just that we like think about it and then it appears. We also need to take action. I'm sure you're somebody who knows that. Like I'm seeing lots of action oriented energy here already. So balance, spirituality, and practicality. This is your year of like finding more answers of how to kind of create the life that you really want to. Prosperity lies ahead. New moon in Taurus prosperity lies ahead. If you needed more confirmation that prosperous times are coming, there's a payoff for all of this effort. There is, there's your answer. Prosperity lies ahead. New moon in Taurus. I do feel like there's a lot more prosperity ahead for you in terms of your career, in terms of the things that you do. Um, you may also have a support system with you. There might also be like maybe your partner's being very supportive with you to help you bring a certain vision to life this next year. I think you're being cheered on and I think you're going to have a really great, um, yeah, support system by you who's, you know, they're there to help cheer you on, to help give you that motivation to keep going towards this dream. Okay. Let's see. We also have conjunction. So unity, autonomy, individuation, inner self, self-motivation, concentration, and personal interests. You are conjoining with that vision. This is the year where the pieces are meeting, the pieces of the puzzle. It had to wait to, you know, divine timing. Conjunction also talks about divine timing. It's coming in the right time. But this is the year where you will be meeting with a lot of those intentions, a lot of those desires that you've been working towards. That's going to be happening. And significant people that you're going to be meeting. Conjunction is also crossroads, like um, divine meetings. You might find that uh, the people that you need in order to help you move forward on certain things, the different ideas, the answers that you need, those are going to somehow divinely come. Come back to this video at the beginning of 2025 and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that did happen. I did divinely somehow was magically led to the right people, the right resources, the right things, the right timings were all in play. Okay. We also have series, so nurture. This one can also talk about children, so maybe that's also in the cards for you if you're thinking about starting a family or if you're wanting to put more effort towards your children if you already have some. If you're not thinking about kids or anything like that, the series nurture card can also talk about nurturing your vision, nurturing the things that you love, the things that you want to bring to life, putting a lot of effort and time and resources into them to help them come to life, to help them grow and prosper. So there could be certain things in your life that you are focused on in that way. We also have Gemini coming up for you. So Gemini energy might be significant for you, but Gemini energy also deals with communication, learning, teaching, studying, writing, your throat chakra might be opening more. You might also really want to be more of the authentic version of yourself because Gemini is very connected also to the lover's card and can talk about showing up authentically, finding your voice, activating your throat chakra, communicating more. 
We also have new full moon in Gemini. We have a lot of Gemini energy coming up for you. For a lot of groups, I feel like Gemini and Taurus energy has been extremely prominent, um, as well as Virgo. But yeah, Gemini energy for you is very significant this year. And we also have Saturn. So I do see you like studying something new to find the answers, maybe taking a course, school, meeting the right people. Again, we have so many cards for you about meeting the right people, networking. There's going to be significant people that help bring you in alignment with certain visions. I'm also hearing sacred union. I think some of you are getting married. Like, look at this. It's like two people holding hands, like kind of in the lover's card. I think that there could be marriage in store for you, a divine relationship if you're single or taking things to the next level, like getting engaged or things like this. We also have Saturn coming up. Saturn is also the um, planet of commitment, by the way. So sometimes when we have like a Saturn return, usually a lot of people get married around that time. Maybe you're going through your Saturn return. So Saturn's popping up to be like, hey, Saturn return's happening. And if you don't know, if you're anywhere between the ages of 28 to 30, you're probably going through your Saturn return. Even if you're like maybe 31, you may be just coming out of it. But for everyone, it happens and begins sometimes as early as the age of 28, usually happens more on average between 28 and a half and 29 years old, and then usually finishes at about 30, 31 years old. Um, but yeah, so Saturn, Saturn can be very significant. It's usually also a, a big time where people get married. Even if you're not any of those ages, Saturn might just be coming up because it's a planet of talking about your commitment, your boundaries. It is also discipline, like self-discipline. Like I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to push myself towards this. I'm going to commit, you know, it's a planet of commitment. And it helps us discover more of who we are by creating more structure, more boundaries of like, yes, I'm this, but no, I'm not that. And this is more me. It's, it helps us define. It helps us make detail. And for you, I feel like this is a year where you're so much more detail oriented in your life. You are ready to commit to find where you want to root yourself. Um, I also think that you're more disciplined when it comes to your endeavors, what you're wanting to create, cultivate, and, you know, uh, different habits that you might want to end in your life this year as well. So yes, I also think you're going to be pushing beyond your, your normal limitations in your life. So when it comes to things that you once felt limited by, this is a year where you're overcoming those limitations, my love, the hangman, where you used to hang up the, hang up the coat and you're like, no further than this. Nope. This is my limit. This is my, you know, you are breaking out of old limitations and old molds. This is a year, I think, where you're ready to expand and break your old paradigms. And you're like, you know what? I'm no longer going to hang up the coat at this point. I think I want to take things the next, the next step. I want to break those limitations, which is also so connected to the moon card. You're breaking old limitations. Oh my goodness. My love. Breaking those old limitations. And... There's a sense of maturity coming out in you and a sense of, um, not that you aren't mature. However, what I mean by this is this deeper sense of assertiveness in your life and this deeper sense of like letting go of any like shyness that might still stand in your way, letting go of like deep self-judgment, deep self-criticism that kind of keeps you limited. I see you breaking limitations I see you becoming a really good communicator. Uh, you might be really interested in writing something, starting a blog, doing something online. We have all this Gemini energy, communicating something, teaching something, um, you know, using your voice, using your voice, um, the communication styles. Like I really see you going past your limitations on this and I see you honing in and perfecting certain skills that you have. Yeah, like perf perfecting skills is very much this eight of um, pentacles that we have. And I think that's where a lot of your prosperity is going to come from is this perfecting of these skills, pushing beyond these old boundaries, taking a higher level of responsibility, but in a really amazing way. Like I feel like this new endeavor that you're going to be working towards is a higher level of responsibility. It's, it's a lot. 
but you're undertaking this because you have the confidence in yourself and you're going to meet with the right people and what you end up creating and bringing to life, I think you're going to be really excited about. And yeah, I just see you kind of coming into this more mature version of yourself. You're more mature than you've ever been in the past. You've, you have more wisdom, more knowledge to share and bestow. And that's going to bring you to whole new places this year. So with that being said, let's dive into our next cards here. We also have Odyssey. <gasps> You're crossing that bridge, my love. Odyssey. What is the footprint you're wanting to leave behind in this world? What is your story? So offer, I don't even know what this says. Guest, does it say guest? I don't know. Offer, treasure, celebrate. There is a celebration, your odyssey. There's something that you're going to be very proud of doing, like an accomplishment, a celebration, which also could be indicating this like marriage or, um, engagement here or something where your your love life is up leveling but i also feel like there's going to be something significant to celebrate possibly within an accomplishment that you're making in this next year this is a very treasured time for you there is definitely like a maybe even a, an award an award or celebration for yeah what you're doing we also have guardian so protect defend shelter i think you're going to be much more strict with your boundaries when it comes to saying no to different things in your life that you know you don't want to say yes to you don't have time for i think you're going to be much more strict with your boundaries to keep you on track with the direction that you want to go in which is going to be amazing for you i think that that's going to be uh, extremely beneficial in your life and we also have faith hope anticipate aspire and foresee I feel like you already have big feelings about what 2024 holds for you. And maybe you're just like, I just want confirmation on it, but I already have these big feelings about what's going to happen. Here is your sign. The things that you're already anticipating and feeling into 2024, have faith, trust that, because that is something that I feel like you're already foreseeing because it's already in the creation process. You already see it because it's already kind of accumulating and happening. All right, so let's dive into some more cards for you. My group fours, let's see. We also have Healer of the Ages. I think you're stepping up into your, into your healer stage of your life where for one, I feel like you're healing, but you're also offering deeper healing to others. Familial healing is happening. You might also be interested in taking your education to the next level in some way. Maybe you're just somebody who loves to learn, read, and up-level yourself, especially with that Eight of Pentacles. Like, you love learning, reading, up-leveling, making new skills. You're a kind of do-it-yourself kind of person when it comes to anything that you envision. You're just like, let me just do it myself. But this is your year of collaboration as well, because I don't think you can do everything on your own, okay? But I do see you up-leveling things, learning something new healer of the ages familial ancestral healing if you have family dynamics that still need healing i see that happening this year as well and just creating more love and compassion and connection and forgiveness within your family as well let's see what else we get for you my love Yeah, if you ever have, if you have any family dynamics in the moment that need healing or addressing, that's coming through. You also have the child within. This one came up for the last group that also talks about childhood healing, healing within your family. So there's another confirmation. If you do have any like family things that might need addressing or healing or, yeah, that's going to be happening. This might even be happening on a personal level for you of just like, just forgiveness, being able to let go. Um, and then we also have the sun, joy, enjoyment, life force, success, vitality, and play. This is a successful year for you. Things are um, coming to the light. Things are coming to fruition. This is such a good card for accomplishment, feeling really proud of yourself. It's also a card of celebration. So we have another one of celebration. Spirit wants to give you a reminder to celebrate. Oh my gosh, Spirit has a Spirit has a message for you right now. The different accomplishments that you have, the different big life events 
that are happening for you. Spirit wants to remind you to celebrate those times. They're not gonna come around again. You're not gonna have them again. Make sure that you celebrate them and that you take time to enjoy those events, to enjoy those milestones. There's different milestones that you're having right now and in your future, in your year of 2024. Take time to celebrate those and celebrate them properly. Even if they're small milestones, I don't care. Those times aren't gonna come around again. And that's the time to celebrate them is at the peak of their, of their happening. Celebrate it. Because you might be looking back one day being like, wow, I really wish I would have like enjoyed that moment, enjoyed that chapter, enjoyed that event, made it what it was supposed to be, created those memories, you know? Um, so anyway, Spirit had that advice <laughs> for the year of 2024. I felt that come through really strongly. So let's dive back into this. I feel like we need one more card from this deck here. Let's see. Feeling like that one wants to come out. The Wild Rose, do it your way. Embrace your uniqueness untamed. There is a message for you. Doing it your way. Being the Wild Rose, allowing your wild side out. Doing things your way. Allowing that uniqueness of who you are to come through and shine. I feel like you needed that reminder, okay? And let's dive into another deck. I'm also going to restart my camera just so it doesn't cut out here. Okay, my love, let's go ahead and <laughs> dive into some more cards here. We also have the revolutionary. So creating a revolution in your life, where have you felt stuck? Because the areas that you felt stuck in are clearing and healing. We also have the underworld thing. Yeah, areas that you felt stuck in are actually gonna become your strengths. There's a whole revolution happening in those areas that you once felt stuck in. That's gonna become a strength for you. And doesn't that always happen? Things that we've struggled with in our past. Think about the things that you've struggled with in your past. Haven't those now become your strengths? It's something that you're so knowledgeable in. You have so much wisdom in it because you struggled with it. And now it's literally a strength. Something that you struggled with last year is becoming a strength for you. And whatever you're putting together right now is going to be something that's really exciting. Staying committed though, Saturn. It tests your commitment. If you are not consistent and not committed, there's not going to be a lot of progress. You're not going to see a lot of progress. However, if you are committed, you're going to see a lot of progress there, which I feel like I'm seeing a lot of progress for you. I'm seeing that you are like at this stage of being like, yep, yeah, I'm committed. So let's go ahead and take these oracle cards and we are going to see spirit's advice for you with these then we're going to dive into our astro dice as well so let's see my group fours what is spirit's advice for 2024 for my group fours let's see there's some advice let's maybe get another one there we go okay oh that one wants to come out too all right let's see Okay. Nobody feels your heart like you do. You feel your heart. I feel like this is advice to trust yourself, to trust your desires, because nobody feels your heart like you do. That means nobody's going to fully understand you. So people, there could be conflicts, there could be misunderstandings, there could be a difference in opinion, a strong difference in opinion, and that's okay, because nobody feels your heart like you do. And you don't feel anybody else's heart like they do. So we have to be okay with people's different paths. And you have to be okay with knowing that your path is going to be different too and trusting in yourself because nobody feels your heart like you do. We also have never make yourself feel small for anyone or never make yourself small for anyone. That is powerful. Never make yourself small for anyone. That is so powerful. Okay. Then we have these ones. I am in charge of my own happiness. We should never rely on somebody else or place our happiness on the actions of others and what they do or don't do. 
I am in charge of my own happiness. You are in charge of your own happiness and everyone else is in charge of their own as well. Then we also have, I am a magnet for unlimited abundance of love, health, and money. That is a beautiful affirmation. Please write that down and repeat that throughout your year. I am a magnet for an unlimited, um, for an unlimited, I feel like that's supposed to say for unlimited, ab wait, what? Oh wait, no, never mind. This is right. Why is my grammar going weird? I'm a magnet for an unlimited abundance of love, health, and money. My brain was just, yeah, it had a moment. Okay. Last of the Oracle cards. I am in full alignment with my physical vessel, emotional body, and etheric spirit. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and dive into our Astro Dice. We're going to roll the Zodiac Sign Dice three times to get the top three most likely Zodiac Signs um, that are going to be in your life in 2024. And with that as well, whenever we're attracting particular people to our life, it's because it's, we're magnetizing that particular zodiac sign's energy, which is why we end up attracting the people. So every zodiac sign also has a particular energy with it. So I also read into the energy of that zodiac sign and what that means for your life. So let's go ahead and see what that is. We have Gemini. So you're going to be attracting Gemini energy into your life, which also will magnetize Gemini people into your life. Gemini energy is again... <laughs> We had double Gemini's here. So Gemini energy is about communication, opening the throat chakra, aligning to the right people and uh, collaborations, networking. It's also learning, communicating. It can deal with writing um, and all of that. It could also deal with short travel, short road trips to different places. It can also deal with studying, learning, and also um, things that are happening online. So if you have like an online Thing that you're wanting to do, like a website that you're wanting to build or um, anything else online, like social media or anything like this. It can deal with calling in more of those energies, calling in the right audience, the right people, networking and getting exposure there. So the next sign that we have for you is Scorpio. So Scorpio energy, which is um, going deep, finding deeper answers, finding deeper wisdom. It's deep about learning. It's finding your passions. Um, it's also like, it can be a sexual sign as well. So, you know, like lighting the fire for romance to happen and deeper connection there. So we can also talk about that. And it also can talk about shared assets. So this could be moving in with somebody, um, getting married, deeper things like that, deep bonds, deep connections. And of course, Scorpio people coming into your life. Then we also have Virgo. So Gemini, Scorpio, Virgo. Virgo deals with healing learning. It's um, a sign that also is about organization, getting things done, being productive, detail-oriented, getting our health in alignment, um, and keeping those things in check. And it can also deal with deep healing as well, especially with wounds or other things that we want to heal and um, mend. So those are the prominent signs in your life. And let's see, any last info? Inf for, I was about to say information, information, and then also info. And then I just tongue twister there. My mouth wanted to say both of them. So we have Mars in Aries. Wow, that is potent. And then in the eighth house, that's very potent actually. Wow, okay. So Mars in Aries in the eighth house. I'm seeing like bringing a vision to life and also being ready to make a big transformation um, in your life. The eighth house is like a death and rebirth. What are you wanting to shed, let go of, heal? Mars wants to take action. Mars wants to move ahead. And Mars is also very connected to Scorpio, which is related to the eighth house. And Mars is very related to, of course, Aries. It's the ruler of Aries and Scorpio. So this is a warrior mindset. Warrior going through, taking action. This is a huge action-oriented year for you where you're shedding those limitations, which is what we talked about with that Saturn energy, shedding limitations. I also feel like you're stepping into your power. Mars is so powerful. Stepping into your power, letting go of those old things that used to hold you back, old limits that you used to have. That's going. 
feeling like you have such a strong call and direction and just moving towards that. I feel like there's going to be a lot of energy moving forward, a lot of passion being ignited through um, your vision, the revolution that you have, big transformations happening. <laughs> so exploring those deeper aspects of yourself, going through deep healing on... Ooh, some, some of you I'm feeling like you might get into shadow work or looking at your limitations that have been holding you back and being able to heal that, break through those and have big breakthroughs in your life. So wherever you felt stuck or stagnant, things that haven't been moving forward for you where we had this hangman energy and then also where we had um, our success energy. So the success Saturn, this like wherever you felt kind of stuck where things weren't really moving forward, you're going to be healing what was standing in the way there, those like kind of blocks that have been stopping you from creating that success that you've been wanting, from moving forward and manifesting the things that you've been wanting. That is being healed. Okay, so major change for you at my beautiful group number four is thank you so much for joining me here for your 2024 reading. Wow, big energy is happening for you this year. I've also been talking to people about the significance of their crystals and for you, Larimar. Larimar is a very rare crystal that's only found in Dominican Republic and it's very connected to the ocean, going with the flow, so allowing things to start to flow, getting past those limitations in your life. So Larimar is very good for helping things flow better, for also awakening your throat chakra, which is very much the Gemini energy that we were have that we had going on here. Also, we do sell these crystals on the shop. So if you're curious about Larimar, which is a very rare crystal, so it's a little bit more expensive, but very amazing, beautiful crystal to have around. We also do make crystal bracelets. So if you're interested in any of that, I'll have all of that linked down below. We make them custom to your wrist size. They're also made with gold fill, so they don't tarnish. They're absolutely amazing and high quality crystals that then you can wear and take with you, which is amazing. We do also have rings, other things. And all of that, I personally love talking about it because I... I literally love the jewelry we make. I think it's amazing. So all that will be linked down below. I'm also going to be making a particular love-focused 2024 reading and a career-focused 2024 reading. So if you want to um, get those or your astrology prediction for your zodiac sign for 2024, we're going to be getting into all of that. So stay tuned for those videos. Those will be coming out soon. And I'm sending you all so much love. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And until next time, bye. All right, my group fives, if you chose this pile, this is gonna be your 2024 events, significant things that are gonna be going on for you. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, group five, we have a really interesting message to start us off. So we have Page of Swords, Judgment, Star being reversed. Um, I wanna talk about these right off the bat here. So the Page of Swords with Judgment, I feel like there's like an idea that you have or um, something that you've like thought about and maybe you've even told a couple people about it and you're like, oh, I'm like thinking about doing this. Judgment over here, you have a lot of people throwing their opinions at you. For one, I feel like you have a lot of people telling you like, do it, you should do it, oh my God, like go up there and do it. And then we, I have some people that are like, no, maybe, I don't know, like could, could go well, could not, you know, I, th I feel like you have two different voices in your head that are either telling you to go for this thing, to do it, and then other voices that are like, no, it's not the right time. Like star, star being reversed is this kind of feeling like it's not the right time. I can't do it. It's a feeling of like, I don't have what other people have. Like the successful people have um, this, they have this, they have this, they have all these different things to help them be successful. I don't have those yet, so I can't do it. I can't get started. But the thing is, is like we, we can't get to that level of what those other people have unless we start making progress towards that, unless we actually start doing it. Like, for example, um, this just this example that I just feel like sharing is my YouTube journey. I put it off for so long because I was like, oh, I can't do it yet because I don't have the best camera or I can't do it yet because I don't have the best microphone and I don't have this and I don't have that and I don't, I don't know how to talk on camera. But the thing is, is like, I would have never accumulated those things unless I started. Like I would never get good at talking on camera unless I started talking on camera. You can't grow that skill otherwise, you know? You could do a lot of contemplating on it, but you're never gonna grow the skill until you actually do it, until you actually apply it. And then, you know, I, I didn't have any way to buy a better camera or buy a better microphone unless I started doing it and made the money and then felt like it was a worthy investment to invest in 
the upgraded equipment because then otherwise I would just be convincing myself it's not worth spending the money on because I don't know if it's going to be successful. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere. So it's like, then of course I had these limitations when it came to investing in the better stuff because you know, there's all these concerns of it. Like, is it going to go anywhere? That's why you just have to do it with whatever you have right now. There is no better time than now. So spirits coming through in this reading with some advice, first off. And I feel like in the beginning of the year, you're going to have this sort of contemplation of, do I say yes? Do I start it? Like this page of swords is this decision that you have to make. It's this idea that you have that's accumulating in your mind with all these different voices that you have going on. Some of them calling you to, yes, do it. Just start it. Just jump into it. And you're like, yeah. But then there's also these reasons of like, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to make a decision. We have to judge for ourselves, you know, the circumstances. And the best way to do that is to dive in, to dive into doing it. And queen of pentacles that we have right here, my love, queen of pentacles, she's the doer. She's the one of like, okay, let me invest my time. Let me invest my energy. Let me invest what I have into my vision right? And then we have five of wands being reversed. And the five of wands is this like, uh, it can be like constructive criticism, little bit of chaos going on being reversed here. It can indicate that sometimes we're like really getting in our own way. Sometimes we can be overly critical to the point where we don't even it, like it, it, it hinders us. Right? So this is a thing that I think you're going to be facing in 2024 and you're facing it in order to overcome that and heal that so that you're no longer perpetuating those same cycles because I think that's the biggest thing that's been holding you back is this loud inner critic voice that almost just hinders you it paralyzes you from taking action and um the potentials of like what might happen scare you more than just like staying uncomfortable where you are where you don't necessarily want to be it's not your full vision it's not your full uh potential right you want to go for your full potential. You want to realize what that is. Everyone wants to realize what their full potential might be, but we can't find it unless we start doing it. So again, I feel like judgment's been getting in your way a lot. Inner critic has been getting in your way a lot. The opinions of other people have been uh, coming through. But this is about you figuring out what is it that you want. You have this Queen of Pentacles energy in you, which is amazing. And she's like the doer she's successful, she uses whatever she has to the best of her ability to create magic. If you take whatever it is that you have right now and you use it to the best of your ability, you will climb higher, you will get further, but we have to get past that voice. There's a lot of voice energy here. It's talking about voice energy, but you do have an inner calling. The judgment talks about an inner calling that you have, that inner desire that pulls you but it's being paralyzed by this voice, by these ideas, these worries, these concerns, all of that, okay? Maybe we're worried about failure and per being reversed. We're worried about failure and it's hindering us from even getting started, which is failure in itself. So <laughs> you know what's the interesting thing about letting failure paralyze you? Is then you are failing, right? And I, I don't mean to say that you are failing because you're not, like you, you, like there's no such thing as failure because if we keep trying, if we keep moving forward, there's no such thing as failure. It just ends up being a challenge or an obstacle, right? That we have to overcome if we're not choosing failure, but we also have to move forward, right? And so I feel like a big theme for you, spirits coming through, talking about this, this fire under your butt, like let's get going. 2024 is the year to get going. And I see you doing that. This queen of pentacles lets me know that you are going to get started. It lets me know that you are going to put yourself out there. You are going to start putting your best foot forward and... You're not going to let perfectionism and these opinions get in your way anymore. I see you healing that, my love. Like all in these cards, you are healing that. This star card coming up indicates that there's no better time than now. And 2024 is your year for getting started on this thing, for moving forward, for creating something great and overcoming those old fears and doubts. Let's dive into some more cards. So what else do we have? Wow. This one is a message for you right now, my love. This is, is it ever a message for you? Don't let your past hold you back. You've had past experiences before that maybe have let you down. Maybe you've even been told different things, saw different things happening for other people that were disappointing. And maybe you run from that 
but don't let your past hold you back. That there's no such thing as failure if we keep trying, but if we don't try, I mean, we might as well have chosen failure, right? <laughs> like, do you get, do you see the paradox of that? Um, so that's really interesting. We also have nothing will come of this situation. So the things that you're worried about, also when you're void of course, when you're off course, okay? When you're not doing anything, when you're just out there not doing anything, nothing will come of this situation. Nothing is going to happen if you stay neutral. Nothing's going to happen. But do we want to stay in the neutral position where nothing's happening? Or would we rather start living life, right? Going towards what you want. Do you want to stay in the past and then staying in the limbo? This is the limbo. Nothing will come of it if we're not moving, if we're void of course, if we're off course of what we want. But if you get back on course and you you can get past the criticism and the judgment. You can get to this Queen of Pentacles who's dedicated. She's dedicated. She's committed. She puts all her effort in to make something that she's proud of. And you know, the interesting thing about the Queen of Pentacles is she does things because she is proud of them because it makes her happy. She's not looking for some like outcome. However, she manifests an outcome because she's doing it for her. She's doing it because it there's value in it for her, right? So let's say that there is like a career that you really want to do, a business that you really want to open, some idea that you really want to start and bring to life. Do it because it would be fulfilling for you to say that you did it. Don't do it being concerned about anything else, right? And of course you can have a vision of like, yes, I want it to be successful. We all want that and you can move towards it, right? But when we do it, being scared of failure or anything like that can be such a hindrance. And the way around that fear is to say, you know what? I'm just going to do it anyway because I want to. I literally just want to. So let me just do it. And like, I can work out the kinks as I go. But as long as I can just start making things that I'm proud of. And even if it takes some learning along the way, even if I fail a couple times, like, let me just get out there and do it, right? And, oh, if you needed a sign right now, group five, this is your sign from the universe right now. You are good enough. So many of us are held back by this idea that we're not good enough and that we're not worthy of our dreams, goals, or desires. And full moon in Virgo, this is your year of healing that, bringing back the, a sense of self-worth and a sense of self-confidence. Queen of Pentacles, she is the freaking queen of self-worth because the pentacles are so attached to worth and value, knowing your value, figuring out your value and seeing that you do have something to offer because I feel like right now you're judging yourself thinking like, I'm not as far along as I could be. I'm not like a, I'm not a master yet. You know, I'm just here being the page of swords. I have this idea. But the thing is, you're being overly critical of yourself. There's always value that anybody in the world has. Everybody has value. Everyone has different experiences. We might not have every experience in the world, but we don't need to in order to get started and in order to have value to provide. Um, whatever level that you're at in something, like let's say that you have an aspiration, just throwing out a random thing. Let's say you have an aspiration to be a tarot reader, but let's say like, oh, I've only been reading tarot for like a year. The thing is, is like you still have value to provide you know, you might not have been doing it for 10 years or something, but there's still value there for the people who've maybe only just started learning tarot and they don't know anything about it, right? You still have a level of expertise that provides value to a group of people, right? You don't need to get to a place where you can provide value for everyone in order to get started on something because it's impossible. It's impossible to provide value for everybody. There's always going to be people at different levels, you know, and we're never going to be the blanket over that encompasses everything, right? So you can get started where you are and that still provides value. This is becoming like a whole like free lesson right now. <laughs> I apologize. Spirit's coming through with the lessons, but I think that this is like I don't know, Spirit's giving me these messages for a reason, clearly. And yeah, you are good enough, okay? This is your year of cultivating that self-worth to realize that you are worthy, you have value to provide, and that's great, like, let's go. <laughs> let's, uh, let's honor that. So let's see what else we get for you, my love. What else do we have? We have North Node. <laughs> Destiny challenges and the North Node, guess what it deals with? Your 
purpose, your trajectory, where you want to end up, your future, your goals, right? Your, your aspirations, what you want to create, who you want to be. That is the North Node. It's what we're moving towards. So you have a calling and this year is clearly about following that calling, going towards your future. And I feel like you're going to be taking big action this year towards that inner calling. Yes, there's going to be challenges along the way. There's challenges along every single path in life okay and if we're not okay with that we better get okay with that because life is full of that we never like no matter where you are in life even if you master something there's still challenges ahead of you you know what i mean <laughs> there's no such thing as mastery really there's always more to learn always more to uncover okay we also have the 11th house which is very connected to uranus and aquarius this is the house of um expansion it's also the house of media and of um, it's also a house of friendships, creating the connections that you need. It can be um, big travel or social media, the internet, doing things online, doing things that are very on the forefront of technology, new things that are coming out, things that a lot of people don't understand yet. So you might have certain aspirations where maybe you need to learn a lot more. Maybe you can learn from other people who've already done it. Maybe you can um, connect with people who are on the same path as you that are wanting to learn it too. And then you figure it out together. I feel like this is your year of connecting to people that will help support you that are on your same journey in your same spot. It's so amazing to have people that are on your same like level. I actually have this friend who both me and her started our YouTube channels at the same time. This was like way back in 2014. Oh my God. So long ago. I, I've almost been 10 years on YouTube. Um, those videos are on private now, but I met her when we started our channels at the same time and we actually lived in two very different places in the world at the time, but it was so nice to have someone that was on that same journey that both of us didn't know if we were going to be successful on YouTube or anything. We hadn't even figured out our niches on YouTube yet, but we're still like best friends to this day. And we both made a career out of it. We both did become successful. And so it's really nice to have that support team. And I've made some of my best friends through meeting people online that started YouTube at the same time as me. So let's say that you're wanting to do something and you're at a place right now, if you can find people who are on that same page as you with the you know similar aspirations, having that support team and being able to just bounce off thoughts with each other is amazing. So yes, I'm using YouTube as an example just because that's like my personal example that I can give, but it's so amazing to have that support team. And I see that you're gonna be making those connections because the 11th house talks about making those connections. And these might be online connections for you considering that this is the 11th house, but these are friendships, um, connecting to other groups that are doing similar things. It also it even says society, technology, projects, and social media, okay, as well as originality, eccentric, can't even say the name. Um, eccentric kind of qualities so an eccentricity so when it comes to your uniqueness allowing your uniqueness to, to shine that is that aquarius energy so maybe you have an aspiration to kind of step outside of your comfort zone a little bit to own your uniqueness your unique desires your unique talents and allowing that to shine not feeling critical about it owning that as you in allowing that to shine. So that is a huge part of your 2024 year, stepping outside of your comfort zone, okay? Connecting with people that are gonna be on that same page as you, moving towards more of that destiny. Don't let your past hold you back with that south node. Then we also have the 12th house, I surrender. Letting go of those things that are so deeply holding you back, okay? those unconscious limiting beliefs that we have that are setting in the way, the unconscious self-sabotage that we might do. So we're, when we're like, oh no, I don't have time for it anyway. So I can't take action towards it. I don't, I don't have the time. It's like, maybe we're just coming up with that excuse. Maybe we actually could make the time if it meant a lot to us, which it does, but maybe we could actually make the time, but maybe we're using that as an excuse. Cause we're like, ah, it's scary. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is about getting over that, getting over the hindrances, the scariness that might be standing in the way. Then we also have the south node coming up to gifts and lessons. So you have gifts from your past life, like we all do. And from your past life, you may have like 
you know, certain talents, certain gifts that want to be realized. And the South Node and the North Node are always very connected. They're on opposite points of the spectrum of each other. So we're taking our past, moving into the future. What, have, what can you learn from your past? From your past mistakes, from your past failures, although they're not failures because they all have purpose. So what can you learn from that? And when you do that reflection, like you become unstoppable. You can do anything when you're able to find the gifts and the lessons within your past experiences. When you can do that, you become unstoppable. The um, formula for success in everything. Sorry, there's like a huge truck going by so loud. Anyway, the formula for success in anything is to do the thing, reflect. So look on the thing that you've done, South Node, reflecting. Look at, okay, what could have I improved? Where did this maybe fail? Why is this not turning out the way I wanted it to? Why is it not getting the results I wanted it to? Reflect on that. Come up with your ideas. Revise that the next time. Take action again. Do your next thing. Then reflect on that again. Okay, anything I can improve? Any revisions necessary? Did it provide the results I wanted? If not, why not? Bam, go again, go again. It's this learning curve of climbing the ladder until you get to the place that you wanna be. That is the formula for success, okay? And then waxing crescent moon. So inspiration, creativity, growth, accomplishment, learning. This card is so powerful. Let me read what that says again. Inspiration, creativity, growth, accomplishments, and learning. Waxing crescent is the building stage of the moon. So it's not the waning stage, it's the growing stage. So you're in the growing stage of 2024. This is your growing stage where you are building something. You are working towards something through inspiration, creativity, growth, through accomplishments. So remember to celebrate those accomplishments along the way and learning as you go. You can get to your end goal. And this is your year of moving towards that. Anyway, teacher, <laughs> I think you're going to be coming across a really wise teacher where you get to learn so much more. Maybe there's somebody that you're going to look up to who can teach you a lot of different things um, or that you can just learn from through observation of this person, but learn upskill, educate, prepare. Um, I think you're going to be learning so much to help up level your skills, to help get you to that vision that you have. Okay. Snowy white owls might be very, um, present. You might see them around. They could be significant symbolism for you. And all of this means is this is your time of gaining wisdom, learning, following, and, um, reflecting on the past and what you can learn from, what you can learn from it. We also have the sovereign. So reclaim, preserve, govern, remember reclaiming your power, being the governor of your life, the sovereign. This is the person who's free. She's the governor of her life. She guides her life. She doesn't feel victim to her life and to the circumstances. She takes control. She takes her power back and says, no, I'm the leader of my life. I'm going to take control of this present moment by taking responsibility for my present moment and moving forward, creating that freedom for myself. She is powerful and she's okay with taking responsibility because she's like, if I take responsibility, that also means that I am the guide. I'm the one who holds the power to make change. Then we also have the magic maker, captivate, touch, tantalize, sense. The magic maker. I think you're gonna be realizing your inner magic of what your best skills and assets are. And through realizing what your best skills and assets are this year, I really think you're going to up-level yourself in ways that you couldn't have even imagined. Learning how to captivate an audience, learning how to um, market things or market yourself or your ideas or whatever this is. But I feel like you're going to be learning how to make magic this year. We also have musician coming through. So shine, play, uh, evoke, express. Maybe some of you are really interested in music and this is your time of like diving deeper into that. Or perhaps um, music is just something that means a lot to you and brings a lot of inspiration for you in whatever creative venture that you're going for. But the shine aspect of this makes me feel like there's something that you want to do that, you know, would require you to be confident in yourself. It requires you to shine your light and to 
um, to be confident in yourself and your skills and your talents, to know how to to sell what it is that you are proud of, the thing that you're making, to help sparkle it, put the shine on it, all of that, okay? Then we have Lionheart, prevail, endure, dare, confront. Prevail, endure, dare, confront, the Lionheart. So this is stepping into the spotlight. We have a lot of like lion energy going on here. Even in the Sovereign, we have a lion going on and a lion over here. So the lion heart is stepping into your confidence, being confident in yourself and your dreams, being able to deflect like, uh, and not take criticism personally, being able to learn and grow from it and help it guide you without it hurting you. Confronting aspects of yourself that hold you back so that you can grow forward. That's also happening in this next year. And let's go ahead and get some more cards for you. Let's see. We also have Goddess of the Moon and Community. Ooh. Goddess of the Moon and Community. Wow. Uh, okay. So stepping into a much more powerful version of yourself for one this year. That's something that's happening. And Community. Um, this could be... Wait, didn't we also have that in our 11th house that came up and we were talking about connecting to people that are on a very similar journey as you? That's happening for you. You are finding your community of people who are on a similar path as you right now and going through similar experiences in their life. And you're gonna be able to connect with these people very deeply. And these people will be a, an amazing support team for you that make you feel good about where you are and where you're going. Okay, let's dive into some more cards here. Let's see, we also have the Void coming up. Didn't we have Void of Course Moon? <laughs> void of Course Moon and we have the Void coming up. Oh my goodness, you cannot make this stuff up, you guys. I can't believe it. Okay, for, so first off, the Void card. What are you avoiding? Okay, we need to fill that void, not let, nothing's gonna come of a situation if we're not taking action towards it. It's going nowhere. Spirit keeps saying that message. Also the void is um, what are we avoiding or where do we feel like we have a sense of lack in our life? We also have the get curious card coming up. Getting curious about yourself and how you can how you can get to where you want to go. I think that um, you're going to have a much more curious, explorative mind this year. Getting curious on how you can find more fulfillment to be moving forward. If you do feel like there's an area of your life where you feel like it's a bit void, it's a bit lack, it's a bit like it's not giving the way that it should be, I feel like you're going to find new ways to fill that, new ways, new things that are fulfilling for you. That's going to be coming in for you is, is finding new ways to find fulfillment and create fulfillment in your life. Okay. I'm also going to restart my camera really quick just because it's about to cut out. Okay. We are back. Let's go ahead and get deeper into this, my love. We also have self-love coming up for you. So this year is definitely going to be full of self-love and expansion. Uh, the peacock is sticking out to me. The peacock shows its feathers and it isn't afraid to show its feathers, isn't afraid to speak about its talents, its gifts, to be able to talk about it without feeling guilty for talking about its talents and gifts and being able to show those off a little bit, not in like a cocky way, but in a way of like, like, hey, this is me and I'm proud of what I have to show you. So I think that's an aspect of 2024 for you is learning how to talk about yourself and be proud of yourself without undermining yourself or feeling like it's bad to, bad to talk about yourself. Yeah, it's okay as long as it's in balance and, you know, done in a non-arrogant way, <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's a nice balance between that. Um, I feel like maybe at times you feel like, not talking about yourself, not talking about the things that you enjoy or who you are or your accomplishments. Maybe you, you've 
been self-critical of that before, but this self-love is being able to show yourself off, feeling good, being excited to go out in the world and be like, yeah, this is me. Like, and I love talking about myself. It's okay to do that, right? And we also have the nature card. I do think there's going to be quite a few opportunities for you to get out in nature and have big resets and refreshes. For some of you, I'm feeling like there's going to be like going to spas is coming in just because self-love is in there too. I'm getting the feeling of like spas, going to rivers, river bathing, doing things where you're just outdoors more, going on hikes, forest walks, getting out in nature, going to the mountains is something that I'm feeling for you in this card. Um, getting that nature fix. Some of you might be really interested in buying plants or getting a garden going, becoming more natural in the things that you buy. Like some of you might be like, I just want to buy more organic food. I want to make sure that I'm buying stuff that is natural from nature, not processed, buying soaps that are more natural, you know, things like that. Cause I feel like that's tied into, you know, health. It's tied into our endocrine system or hormone system. And so it's really good to get things that are much more natural. So I feel like that's something that you also might kind of get interested in this year if you're not already. And let's go ahead and dive into which card deck do I want to pull out? This our Oracle card deck. So let's go ahead and get some Oracle cards for your year of 2024 and see what else we have in store for you. Okay. These ones I feel like just came up for the last group and they're coming up for you too. I don't know if all of them are, but that one card at the top definitely was part of the last group. Let's get a few more for you though. Maybe you just have a similar message <laughs> as the last group did with the Oracle cards, but let's see. Okay. These are also wanting to come out. Lots of cards. Let's dive in. Okay. We have this one, take your darkest experiences and transmute them into light. So the things that make you cringe a little bit, the things that you're like, oh, I failed at that before. Like, how could I have done that? How could I have thought that before? Whatever. Take your darkest experiences that whatever it might be, transmute them into light. What is the value within them? That's been a major theme for you in this reading. And then we also have maintain your peace coming up, maintaining your peace, find ways of maintaining your peace, relax more, take time off if you need, right? And then be productive productive when we need to as well. And when we take time off in balance, we also have more energy to be productive when we need to be. And then, which is exactly what this card talks about. I allow myself to rest and renew my vitality. That's a huge aspect of 2024 for you. Renewing your, um, your vitality. And then we also have the universe will never let you fail. We were talking about failure as a huge theme in this reading because there's no such thing as failure unless we stop trying. We also have, I will always be enough. That self-worth, my love. I will always be enough. Every, <laughs> look at these affirmations. I love this. Okay. Look at this one. Everything always works out for me. I am exactly where I'm meant to be. You are not behind. I feel like you've had this feeling like you're behind. You are not, okay? Oh, and then look at this. Trust is a muscle. Allow yourself to let go and know what is meant for you is coming. Trust that the things that don't work out were not meant for you, okay? Um, the things that are meant for you are coming. The more you focus on the present moment, the more you align with your inner peace. Powerful. Okay. Now let's dive into our Astro Dice as the last portion of this reading. I love how we have this little fleck of light coming through the window. That's really beautiful. Anyway, Diving into the Astro Dice, we're going to roll it three times to get the top three most likely zodiac signs to be in your life. Also, I talk about the energies behind those zodiac signs as well because it's very relevant. Whenever we're magnetizing and amplifying a particular energy in our life, it also attracts the people that are of similar energy, which is why the energies of each zodiac sign that come up also mean that we're also attracting people of those zodiac signs as well. So let's go ahead and see what we get for you. 
Libra. So Libra energy. This is balance when it comes to our love life. I'm also getting the message of work, work and rest and home life balance and love life balance, balancing out where you spend your time. Um, I'm also hearing balancing your rest versus productivity, balancing your give versus your take, your ability to receive and give in balance. Um, I'm seeing balance within relationships, connecting to people that are um, on very similar wavelengths as you. So that's what I'm getting from this card or <laughs> sign right here. And then let's go ahead and get another one. Also, that means Libra people, by the way, Libra zodiac sign people. We also have Cap Capricorn zodiac sign people. So Libra and Capricorn are very likely to be in your life as well as Libra and Capricorn energies. The Capricorn energy is being productive, getting over self-criticism as well and using it to motivate you to do better, to improve, to climb the ladder. Capricorn is like that mountain goat, the goats that climb the mountain to get to the top. So it's you getting to that goal. How can we climb, get over any challenges, obstacles that stand in the way? That is Capricorn energy. It's very productive. It is getting stuff done. So this is a very productive year for you and attracting Capricorn people. Also Pisces, ooh -hoo -hoo. Libra, Capricorn, and Pisces people with those zodiac signs are going to be very prominent in your life. And Pisces energy. Pisces energy is very dreamy, very intuitive. This is an intuitive time for you. Um, this year, I feel like you're going to get downloads. If you don't know what a download is, it's, it's like when we start receiving ideas or having epiphanies that provide us a lot of value. But I think you're going to be getting a lot of ideas, a lot of answers to your questions through these intuitive epiphanies and insights. And this is a time of being very creative. Your dreams are going to get amplified around this time as well. And it's a lot of healing within your mental space, healing limiting beliefs, healing your perceptions of the world to help you get beliefs and perceptions that promote the version of you that you want to be and the things that you want to manifest in your life. So it's very artsy. It's very creative. It's also very connected to media as well. Um, you know, uh, Gemini and Aquarius are also connected to media as well as Pisces. All of those signs are media, but this one's more in a creative media space. Like Pisces is more of like film and music and things like that and writing, creative writing. So that is the Pisces energy. You're also attracting more of that your way. Now let's go ahead and roll all these dice together to get any last information. Okay, we have the North Node in Scorpio in the 12th house. North node energy, my love. We have so much north node energy coming up for you in this reading. It is wild. So this is your year of getting closer to your destiny, breaking through limitations, allowing your creativity to shine and your uniqueness, diving deep when it comes to what is your purpose. Let's make it happen. What is your ultimate passion? Let's move towards it. Let's start making progress there. Let's get past anything that was holding us back mentally. Let's move forward. This is also unlocking such deep creativity here. North node in Scorpio in the 12th house. This is also allowing your intuition to guide you. So when you get an intuitive idea like, oh my God, it might be fun to do art like this or be creative like this or add this, this flair. This is a creative year for you to allow your uniqueness to shine. Find your unique voice and moving towards allowing your creativity to just spark, to guide you, to move you forward. We also had that 12th house energy over here. We have a lot of repetitive, th repetitive things for you. So North Node, 12th house. Some of you might be interested in diving deeper into spirituality because that's also very connected to North Node being in Scorpio in the 12th house. I also think, pretty sure my North Node is in Scorpio in the 12th house, which is actually kind of crazy. I literally think I have this placement. I'm pretty sure. Why am I like, oh yeah, no, I literally do. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Okay. Anyway, that is that. That is your reading. That is your 2024 year ahead prediction. Thank you so much for joining me here. I also want to speak about the crystals. I've been doing that for the other groups. Your crystal selenite that you were drawn to is a very cleansing and charged crystal. It's very connected to the moon. We also had goddess of the moon here. So this is you awakening your inner power. Um, and your intuition. Your intuition is getting so much stronger this year. Selenite also cleanses negative energies. 
Keeping selenite around you will keep you productive protected from other negative energies and it also charges itself you don't need to charge it you don't ever need to cleanse it because it's always pure it's always in its purest form and it is an amazing powerful crystal we also do sell uh, all types of selenite on the shop on the website so if you're curious i'll have all that inf information linked down below we also make crystal bracelets which i absolutely love I am so into them and we make them according to your wrist size so that they'll fit, fit you perfectly. We make them with all different types of gemstones and even shells, which are coming out soon. And yeah, they're made with gold fill so they don't ever tarnish, really high quality, absolutely love them. Link is down below if you wanna check that out. Also, we are going to be coming out with 2024 predictions on specifically your love life for 2024 and then also specifically around your career for 2024. And then we're also gonna be doing the astrology predictions for 2024 as well. So stay tuned for that. It is going to be so fun and exciting. I'm sending you all so much love. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And until next time, bye.